Yeah, it's Championship Sunday, right? And just a reminder how Clemson started. They dropped their first three ACC series, and then everything started to change in April. They got healthy, their pitching improved, and so did their two out hitting. That's made all the difference. And now they're a projected number four overall seed. It's been a huge turnaround for them. And for Miami, they won their last six ACC series coming in here. They've had hungry eyes. They beat the number one team in the country in Wake Forest yesterday. And now they're a projected nine seed overall. And you said it, Gabby. Gino Damari pregame said this game means everything for us. If we can win this, we get in the conversation. We could be a team, a top eight hosting all the way through Omaha. Mike? Yeah, and that's the goal. And you want to be at home if you can. The second weekend in Super Regionals, of course, if you get past regionals and get to that point. All right, so by this point, for a lot of teams, your pitching has thinned out. But what a luxury it is for Clemson on this stage to roll out an arm in Ethan Darden, who has started 11 games this year, the true freshman from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Yeah, kind of almost like a Swiss Army knife. Started off all over in that pitching rotation and then kind of solidified a spot where he has been starting. He's 3-2 and two with a 5-4-7 ERA, ERA, the 41 strikeouts, 20 three walks in those 52 and two-third inning. He's a three-pitch mix, has a fastball in the upper 80s, a slider and a changeup, but it's funk, it's deception because he has that low three-quarter slot. So that ball is going to run in on righties and go away from the lefties. He will face this bashing Miami lineup for its head coach, Gino Damari. Among the leaders in the country in home runs hit, there's only been one year in Kane's history where they've hit more home runs than this season. You see Edgardo Villegas in the two spot in front of the guy we spotlighted, Yo-Yo Morales. I mean, what Yo-Yo has been able to do this season, it's not easy coming in your junior year. All eyes are on you. And now all of a sudden you're still a Golden Spikes Award semifinalist. His game has risen to another level. You know, they always talk about big time moments need big time players. Well, guess what? Yo-Yo has done it in this ACC Baseball Championship. All right, let's check out the radar. This game's supposed to get started at noon, so we're a couple hours behind schedule. Break it down, meteorologist. What do you got? Well, it looks like things are uh, dissipating over there, so it looks like we have a window. Looks like we're going to be good to play this game and get this one in. Is that decimating or dissipating? Dissipating. Okay. So that's not what it is? That's exactly what it is. Oh, okay. Let's get rid of all the rain. Yeah. Let's play ball. I, I love it. Strap in. Let's do it on this championship Sunday across college baseball. Like we said, inside of 24 hours from the selection show. Away we go. C.J. Kafis rolls one up the middle. Backhand bid by Riley Bertram is not in time. And Kafis is on with an infield single to start it for the Canes. Boy, how about that? C.J. Kafis not wasting any time, saying, I'm just going to go up there. I'm going to try to hit this ball up the middle and uses his speed to get down that line. Brings up Edgardo Villegas, sophomore from Puerto Rico with an OPS right around 850. And he takes strike one from Darden. So Miami team that, yeah, maybe they're not as hot as Clemson, but to your point, they're playing some really good baseball as well. Pulled foul into the Canes dugout. And as Danny alluded to, we chatted with Gino Damari during the rain delay in the dugout pregame, and he said, if we don't win this game, I, I think it is a small chance of being a top eight national seed. And he does feel pretty good if they were to win this game, especially because yesterday in the semifinals to get here, they beat the best team in the country in Wake Forest. And Gino Damari said post game that he told his team might have been their best game of the season the way that they played offensively, but I think it was more on the defensive side where he was looking at his guys playing. Everybody talks about Yo-Yo and his hitting. Not many people are talking about his defense, and he made some phenomenal plays defensively over there at third and long robbing a home run. So, I mean, it was a complete game that UN played, and you really have to play that against Wake to beat him. Darden strikes out Villegas for his first down of the day. So there's one aboard as Yo-Yo Morales climbs in, and he had two jacks yesterday. 
And just impressive, too, because whenever you're a scout and you're watching a guy, you want to see how much power he had to the opposite field. Well, Yo-Yo, I think, made some money yesterday because he showed that he has opposite field power. Rockets one at Caden Grice, who goes to second, and Bertram for the fourth shot of Kathis. As Morales hit it hard right at his fellow superstar, Caden Grice. Wow, what a play by Grice. This ball was hit extremely hard. And this is one of the things, too, when you're looking at a guy like Caden Grice, everything just kind of slows down. He is, has the ability to slow down the game, goes down, gets it, but he doesn't rush. Takes his time, gets the force out at second, and doesn't try to rush it. A lot of other guys, younger guys in that same position, might try to go and hurry up, try to get it quick, and throw that ball into the outfield. So there's two down for Ethan Darden, and he starts with strike one to Blake Sear. One of the best freshmen in the ACC. He was a third team all-conference choice out of Windermere, Florida. And the nickname for Sear is Hollywood. Hollywood. That's how he carries himself. He's had a bravado about him. And boy, he's come through in big moments, really from Jump Street over the course of this season for Miami. Swings through a slider. Boy, that's a good pitch by Darden, and he's been throwing it so far today. It's a very good slider, and especially from that low three-quarter slot, he is able to pull it all the way through to the other side of the play. And then he strikes out Sear. K strut for Ethan Darden. Two punch outs and a zero for off and running in Durham. Back at the ACC Championship, Clemson bats for the first time. Winners of 15 games in a row. You've heard that by now. They've won 25 of their last 28 as well for head coach Eric Dakich. Boy, they got a heavy top five in the lineup in particular. And Caden Grice, like Yo-Yo Morales, a Golden Spikes Award semifinalist. And he's got protection behind him as well. Yeah, he does. And Billy Amick, who has been big. But Caden Grice, another Golden Spikes Award semifinalist. But you're right, Mike. If you don't have a guy like Billy Amick behind you, a guy that can hit the ball out of the ballpark, who, when another team looks at it, goes, listen, guys, we don't want to just put another guy on because Amick can do some damage, Grice will get pitches to hit. Well, it's a big lineup. Going up against Ben Chestnut, junior and a Florida native, who gets the ball today in this ACC championship game after the Canes in the last three days went for it to get to this spot and used a lot of their biggest arms they, a lot. They used basically every single guy that they had. Gino was going for it. He knows how big this was. And for Ben Chestnut, he's a four-pitch mix. He needs to stay down in the zone with the fastball. He can't be doing that. His pitches are usually right around 87, 88. You might even see him touch 90 every once in a while. But he's got to stay down. That way the breaking bond slider will work. Because if it's down, it makes those breaking pitches look more tempting. It makes the breaking pitches look tempting. It makes the changeup look tempting. He's got a good changeup. It's different. It's a slow changeup, about 73 miles an hour. 2-0 to Cam Cantarella. And a strike to the Clemson center fielder, an ACC freshman of the year, and also first team all-conference choice. A couple of triples yesterday in the semifinal win over North Carolina. Just off the inside edge, three and one. I like that he is staying down. Nibbling the corners right now, though. You got to try to get ahead, because once you get ahead, then guys need to go up there swinging, and they will. You don't want to be a one-pitch guy. All of a sudden, you fall behind knowing that I have to throw that fastball. Do you know, Damari told us pregame, if we get four innings from Ben Chestnut, I'll be doing cartwheels. <laughs> 3-2. That was out. Camarillo pops it up. And out of play. And here's the thing. It's not that he can't go through four. Right. It's just that the pitching that they have right now, they are so limited that you have to always in situations like this, always when you're in these kind of tournaments and baseball championships, one guy needs to step up. And right now, Miami is looking at Ben Chestnut to be that guy. 3-2. Camarillo walks. That is what he does atop the Tigers lineup. Just 
what a special player Cam Kinnera is. And just all year long, he has been so good, so patient. I mean, one of the biggest reasons why Clemson is where they're at. The table setter is on in front of Cooper Ingle. Junior from Asheville, North Carolina. He does the catching today. And for Tigers fans, boy, it's great to see Cooper Ingle available and healthy enough to play after yesterday in the third inning. Fouled the ball off his knee, his front right knee. Stayed in the game amid a lot of pain and rolled a single in the center. <laughs> Eric Backage said post game he thought it was just a bone bruise and was hopeful that with some post game icing that Engel would be available to hit. He is, and he's also catching. Yeah, I, I mean I've been there. I've done that same exact thing that Engel did, and as you ski, he actually moved up to the box. Strikes out on the changeup. And Ingle is out number one. And, and here was, here's this ball that we're talking about. It's a fastball up and in and just fouls it straight off of his knee. He was in a lot of pain, stays in the box, gets the base hit, and just goes over hobbling to first. And at that point, we kind of knew, okay, he's going to probably come out. And who knew how he was going to be today? And all of a sudden, we get it and see, oh, he's in the lineup. He's ready to go catching. Brings up Will Taylor. We talked with Clemson's former head coach, the legendary Jack Leggett, before the game earlier today. He was on staff with the Tigers, and he said it felt like for Cooper Engel that it was a Kirk Gibson moment. He was emulating it himself down in the dugout, chatting with us. First pitch to Taylor is a fastball for a strike to the glove side from Chestnut to the Clemson left fielder in the three spot. And a sophomore who is an on-base machine. He was aboard all six trips yesterday in the win for Clemson over Carolina. Tigers offense put up eight runs in the first three innings of their semifinal yesterday, including a five-run first. Jumped on the heels. And then pretty much coasted from there to punch a ticket here to the championship game. Yeah, it's one of those situations for Clemson where, boom, right off the bat, bottom of the first, put up five runs, and then it was kind of just, all right, now we're going to coast. But they didn't even coast. They continued to put up runs. They can continue to hit with runners in scoring position. It's, it's one of the things that I have seen Clemson do throughout this whole entire year. Whenever they need the big hit, they're continuously seeing like they continually get it. Ball and a strike on Taylor. Foul back, one and two. We have seen the variety of breaking balls so far from Ben Chestnut and his changeup, yeah. which is a really good one he threw to strike out Cooper Engel. And we talked with Miami's pitching coach, J.D. Arteaga, before the game. He said, you don't know until he gets onto the game mound which off speed will be his best. That's, that's the problem. Like, Because even if he goes out there in the bullpen, he's throwing his pitches. And from the bullpen to the mound, that can change. So he's like, sometimes the curveball is better, sometimes the slider is better. But the pitch that he always can use is going to be the changeup. It's a different type of changeup. And we saw it with the strikeout on Ingle. It, it's a 73, 74 mile an hour changeup. But that arm action looks like it's going to be an 88 mile an hour fastball. That was the change right there, up. So if he throws the change up, up, a lot of damage could happen. So he has to keep that change up down like he did with Engel. And that's the big thing for him. It's not trying to work the top of the zone. You're, you're going to get hurt up there. So you've got to keep that ball down and work the corners like he has been doing. 2-2. Two -two. Taylor lays off. Changeup is the pitch for Ben Chestnut that has gotten him more than half his strikeouts this season. And Chestnut, for the duration of the season, has only given up a dozen hits on the change. Really good whiff rate on it of 42%, which is excellent for any pitch. 
Three, two. Get on the hands, and Taylor fouls it off himself with Cantarella on the move. And that's what I like what Chestnut does. He'll throw that changeup like he did on two and two to get to three and two, but then he's able to throw that 87 mile an hour fastball in. And when you're a hitter and you know, hey, this guy's best pitch really is that changeup, but he can still spot that fastball, you're going to be a little late on that fastball. And that's how he can get a lot of ground balls. 3 2. Breaking ball, grounded up the middle. Sears stabs, rises, throws, not in time. Was covering the bag and had to reach back. Able to knock it down. But Clemson has two aboard with only one out in the first, and the big bopper's looming. Wow, I mean, this was almost an amazing play by Blake here. This ball hits right off the mound. He sees it comes back on him. Can't make the play. He comes up quick to fire to first, but not in time. Taylor just showing off his speed, but again, what a play to even catch that ball. Brings up Caden Grice. Takes a fastball knee high for strike one as Miami worked away. One of Clemson's best hitters, second on the team in OPS behind Billy Amick. Four for 14 in the tournament. You see the two home runs, also a double, and those eight driven in. Cut and a miss. When you're facing a guy like Caden Grice, I feel like Chestnut just threw the perfect two pitches to start off an AB, a fastball down and away. And then he did throw that, fa that change up up, but it was up and in enough off the plate to where Grice couldn't catch it. It feels like every time Caden Grice climbs in the left-hand box. Damage yeah, can be done. Yeah, there's not <laughs> one batter aboard for him or one base runner aboard for him. There's also multiple. I think yesterday, his first three ABs, he started off with first and second, just like today. Grice shoots one the opposite way, a base hit. Bobbled in left by Viegas, and Clemson strikes first. Caden Grice delivers. Caden Grice does it again. Yesterday, when he came up with being on first and second, he hit a double to score two. Here, doesn't try to do too much. It's a fastball. It gets elevated a little bit too much, and Grice just goes with it, driving it into that six hole. Viegas can't come up clean. I don't think it mattered, though, because Cam Canarella can fly around the bases, and he was going to score. But again, Cade and Grice coming up big. It's nine RBIs for the two-way sensation here in this tournament. And here comes Billy Amick, sophomore DH. He's been as hot as anyone, maybe in the country for the last month and a half. He arrived here as the ACC Co-Player of the Week, a first-team all-conference choice, and an OPS above 1260. in the air, well struck, tailing foul into the right field corner. Here's the thing that is impressive about Billy Amick as well. Yesterday, his first two at-bats, he went triple, then he went home run. Both of them were on off-speed pitches, elevated. When you make a mistake to Billy Amick right now, the ball is going a long, long way. 1-1. One, one. Amick fouls one back. Two on, one out, one in. 25th pitch of the inning, and Amick lifts it. Shallow center behind the bag, and Don Patelli circles with the infield fly rule in effect. Round number two. Well, that's a big out there by Ben Chestnut. That's a changeup and on the hands, and just kind of caught Amick in between his swing. Whether he wanted to swing at that pitch or not, jammed him up as he flew out to Dom Patelli. So this becomes a huge sequence now for Ben Chestnut. Like we said, at 25 pitches for a short-staffed Miami pitching group. And two outs now as he faces Riley Bertram. Switch hitting Michigan transfer waves over the off speed. Again, another changeup. You can see 
Chestnut right now, that's going to be his go-to pitch. Fastball change-ups, that's the pitch that he's working with so far in this first inning. Again. That's sick. It, it really is sick, and I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't think that you're not going to get anything other than another change up here. Bertram just cannot stay back, and I get it. I've been facing guys who have really good change ups, and, and you see it, and it's like, okay, let it travel, let it travel, and I'm still out in front on it. Chestnuts 0 2. Another change up. It's a Jamie Moyer type change up. It almost has like different speeds. He's able to throw one at 73 miles an hour. He's able to throw one at 78. He's mixed minus with that changeup. Now, you can throw a fastball. Now, remember I talked about he's really good when he stays down. Well, every once in a while, you can throw that fastball up out of the zone, though. It's a fastball, and it's lined in the center. Long charges, but has to play it on a hop. Taylor scores as Long bobbles, and with two strikes, Bertram got a heater and added to the Clemson lead. Wow, what a big swing here by Riley Bertram. This is talking about making the pitcher pay for making a mistake. We said he can throw a fastball, but it has to be up out of the zone. He stays down. Bertram makes him pay. Long can't come up with it this time. So now you have Viegas who couldn't come up with the clean ball. Long can't come up with the clean, bo clean ball. I don't think it made a difference. You were still going to score that run. But still, all of a sudden, now you have first and third rather than first and second. That's going to be an error on Long because Caden Grice was able to get to third. Let's bring in Danny Wexelman. Yeah, guys, this is another example you see with two outs, what Clemson's been able to do. That's what they talked about, right? We heard that from Wright. We heard that from Coach Package, that this has been the difference for them, especially starting in April, that they've been able to produce runs with two outs. Mike? Yeah, they have been delivering offensively and in these big spots. It was what you talked about before the game, and already in the bottom of the first, they're forcing Miami to consider its options pitching-wise. There's no one up in the bullpen. J.D. Arteaga visited, and there's Andrew Walters, and he's the perfect indicator of how Miami's approached these last few days here at the ACC Championship. He's the best closer in the country. He's going to be a high draft pick. They threw him three days in a row. And how about this? He came out and told Gino, I can go again today, and they had to tell him, no, you're done. You've helped us enough in this ACC championship. In no way you can go to hit four days <laughs> no in a row. Chance. With regionals next weekend and high hopes for a long journey for the Canes. I mean, this is the numbers that we're talking about. Two saves so far. A two and a third innings against NC State to shut the door. Only gave up one hit. Only has given up three hits in his three games that he's pitched. And it's unbelievable what he has done on this mound. We even talked about it. They went back-to-back -back days, and you're like, okay, we get it. When we heard that he went the third day, we are like, wow. But it's not Gino. It's not JD. It's actually Walters telling them, I'm ready to pitch. I want to win this game. Nothing in two here on Blake Wright. He rolls one gently foul. After Chestnut got ahead of him, nothing in two. Andrew Walters is disgusting. If you haven't watched him, he's got... A fastball in the upper 90s with a high, high spin rate as really well. Really high spin rate. That ball, and it's like a bowling ball as well. We talked to JD, and he said, I, I have had guys who can throw that hard, but you rarely see a guy who almost knocks the catcher over when he throws the baseball. Bertram will coast into second, and no throw from Carlos Perez. So now two in scoring position. Two runs already in for the Tigers here in the first. Big one right here for Chestnut. Need to get out of this inning. To third and caught by Morales. 34 pitches in the first, and Clemson stays hot. They lead two zip in the title game in Durham after one. Miami was the four seed here in the ACC championship and didn't play its first game here until Thursday. And that was first spot in the ACC.
talk to Gino and go, hey, you know, you know that you're already in because you beat NC State and NC State had already uh, beaten Duke. So, you know, is this a game that you might use different guys? And he says, no, we're in to win. We feel like we need to win every single one of these games if we want to get into that top eight seed. Ethan Darden back to work for Clemson against the Canes here in the second, facing Zach Levinson, junior right fielder in the five spot. Well, been low from Darden. Clemson, meanwhile, got a win Wednesday over Virginia Tech, put up 14 runs. Friday, a 4 1 win over BC to earn a spot in the semis. And we told you with the early offense yesterday against the Tar Heels, a win over North Carolina. You know, it's funny. We look at prior to this game, of course, the ACC championship in both Clemson and Miami as a team. Both were batting 296. They both had the same amount of at bats, 108. Both had the same amount of hits, 32. The only difference, of course, was the amount of runs that were scored. Clemson 28 to Miami 18. That's how good. Clemson has been playing. They have just been putting up a whole mess of runs in this championship. 2-2 two, two again. And Levinson is jammed. Trickles it to third. Blake Wright throws him out. Eric Package was really pleased with the all-around performance yesterday against North Carolina. And the pitching is complimentary to the defense. The defense, he says, has good synergy with the pitching. That breeds confidence. And then it's a good lineup with a lot of depth to it. it. It is, and I think that the reason why the defense has good synergy, like you said, with the pitching is because pitching is going out there and they're getting ahead early, they're throwing a lot of strikes, and they're doing this, making the other team put the ball in play early. So every one of these defensive guys are on their toes and they're ready to make the plays. That was Renzo Gonzalez, the DH in the sixth spot, who grounds down to Riley Bertram. Kevin Grice was the beneficiary of the defense and the run support yesterday across his seven innings on the bump. So two ground ball outs, and here's Carlos Perez, the catcher in the seventh spot for Miami. Darden is filling up the zone. Seven out of seven first pitch strikes. And we saw it yesterday, too, with Grice. The same kind of concept. He was 10 for 10 throwing first pitch strikes to start off the game. So that is something that Clemson is really doing well. Going out early and filling up the strike zone. Cut and a miss. Darden just blitzes for a one, two, three second. Punches out Carlos Perez, and it's three Ks for the freshman lefty. My goodness, just on fire. Good two-seamer off the plate away. Oh, yeah, give that billionaire strut. All right, AC seems projected right now in the NCAA tournament field. According to D1 Baseball, what jumps out at you? Well, Miami right there sitting at number nine. How about Clemson, too, working their way up? Now their projection is number four. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens if Miami is able to come back, win this game. Are they going to be able to overtake maybe Virginia? Now there's a lot of talk about that because Virginia did sweep them during the regular season. So how much weight does that have? And they also did win the Coastal by a game. It's going to be interesting. To be clear, you're saying Virginia. Virginia. Won right. by a game over Miami. So, it, so it's going to be very interesting to see because Virginia won one game. They did sweep them. Now it was, you know, five series ago. Miami has been playing a lot better since then. Still, Virginia did come into this tournament very hot. They had won 10 straight. They lost against UNC, so they didn't get to the semis. But still, I mean... It's going to be interesting to see what they do with it. Two balls and two strikes to count on Ben Blackwell, 24-year-old veteran, fifth-year shortstop in the eighth spot for Clemson, which leads 2-0 in this ACC championship game. Ben Chestnut deals. Finds it inside. Yeah, so it is interesting because right now there's four SEC teams, three ACC teams, and Stanford as your top eight national seeds. 
And what happens if Miami does win this game? Morales picks and throws out Blackwell. D1 Baseball this morning, to your point, said it's not outside the realm of possibility that Miami could be top eight. And keep in mind that Stanford has dropped down to number 17 in the RPI. Now, if that happens and Miami jumps Stanford into the top eight, even if they stay behind Virginia, you have all eight national seeds from the SEC and ACC. And, and it's going to be one of those interesting things because, remember, this is just D1 per, per, uh, projections. It's not the selection committee who is making this. So it's just the thought process as when you're looking at the teams in the top eight or top 16 at this point, who kind of jumps out at you, who has done well, where are they at RPI-wise, there's a lot to take in. It's not just we think that these are the best eight teams. You see those top eight on the left side of your screen and then Miami <laughs> knocking on the door. Boy, it's going to be fun. To, I'm going to be all tuned in, that's for sure, tomorrow. And what it means on the Clemson side is, I mean, it certainly seems like a lock yeah. that they will have the ability so. to host both weekends should they advance out of regionals from Doug Kingsmore Stadium. And that's going to be a scene. Jack Crichton strikes out on a fastball from Ben Chestnut. Second K for Chestnut, and there's two away here in the Clemson second. And this is the fastball that he wanted to throw to Bertram. Up and out. He threw it down the middle. So this is the good pitch, especially when you have that good changeup working where guys are swinging and missing. They're, late on, they're early on it. That's when you can go up in the zone with that fastball. Six swinging strikes the first time through for Chestnut. And it flips back to the top for the leadoff man. And ACC Freshman of the Year, Cam Cantarella. Walked and scored in the first. Swings through the change. That's a good pitch. I mean, just, just, you, you talk about arm speed on a changeup. To make it look like it's going to be a fastball out of his hand, he does a very good job with it. There again, it doesn't look like it's going to be a changeup because that arm speed is coming through like it's going to be that 88 mile an hour fastball. Then all of a sudden, there's a parachute that just grabs that baseball. To one. Cameron this one see ya Cam Cantarella just melted that baseball my my Cam Cantarella gets a fastball up in the zone and does not miss it. Here it is, fastball, middle, up a tick. And this ball goes a long, long way. Two triples yesterday and a home run today. And a smile from How can you not? the always level-headed and calm demeanor, Cap Canarella. <laughs> I love the eye black, that warrior eye black that he puts on, thick, coming down. Man, he's on the field. He's ready to go. It's impressive. Ready for the metrics? Well, yes, I would love to hear. 108 miles an hour off the bat, 421 feet. As soon as he hit it, kind of stood up. And now Cooper Engel slices one into left center. Jacoby Long cuts it off and keeps Engel to a single. After the home run, and the chase was on. And this is what you're talking about, 420. Look how high up they had to get it. He is pumped. Yeah, I got it. Let's go. <laughs> Fire me up. Oh, uh, now he's calm. Yeah. Done it a million times. Done it a million times. Now, here's one thing that is good to see if you are a Clemson Tiger fan and if you're in that Clemson dugout. Cooper Ingle hits this ball, rips it to center. He was off and running. There seemed to be no problems with that right knee of his. That's a welcome sign for Clemson for this game and, of course, thinking ahead yep. for the NCAA tournament as well. 
So 3 nothing is the Clemson lead in this ACC championship game. Here in the second inning, and Will Taylor's up again. He had an infield single, scored a run in the first. Will Taylor just keeps getting better and better. Of course, drafted out of high school by the Rangers in the 19th round. And as a two-sport guy, from the baseball side of things, he was one of the highest-ranked baseball recruits out of high school who made it to college in his class and turned down a lot of money from the pro ranks to head to college and play both sports. You know, one of the things, too, with Will Taylor, and we talk about, you know, how he has been able to hit and how he hits with guys on. And you look at yesterday's game, he had six at-bats. He had three hits, three walks. So up to bat, he's not swinging out of the zone. He's making you come to him. He's waiting for his pitch, and when he gets it, he hasn't been missing it. An on-base machine. 2-2 Two -two from Chestnut, rolled foul. Fifty-eight pitches into this game for Ben Chestnut. Two-two again, and a full count. in the first does the same here in the second and this has a similar vibe to the first couple of innings for the Tigers offense as yesterday's semifinal game and walk. Clemson has ran it full on chestnut four times and this one leads to a free pass and again we talked about with Will Taylor and him going up there and being patient not swinging out of the zone making you come to him and again what we talked about right Caden Grice comes up and what does he have yeah that's right man on first and second again it's uncanny <laughs> it's every single time he gets up there that's all we've been seeing and we're looking at balls and strikes for Ben Chestnut 38 strikes compared to 22 balls 60 pitches in an inning and two-third change up to start two outs for Grice with those runners aboard and Danny's been talking about the two out RBIs from this Clemson team recently. Caden was talking about that the other day. He said the goal is with two outs, just be as tough as nails in the box. It's behind nothing and two. Driven in nine. Oof. Yeah, that's the thing. Whenever they needed that big hit, he has come through with the big one. 0-2. Oh, Grice pops it up, and that will fade foul to the seats. I think you keep sticking with your off speed here in your Ben Chestnut. Every single time you're trying to throw that fastball, you're not getting it elevated like you want it to be. You keep kind of elevating just enough belt side where guys are doing damage to you. So if you can't get it up there, either you stay down with your fastball or you continue with your off speed. 0-2. Oh, up with the fastball. That was a good pitch. That's He was finally able to get it up there. We've seen him try to do it three times already. That one, he was able to get it. The other two, he has left middle hittable pitches. Change away. Again, you've called the changeup unique. Yes. Because of the velo, 74 there. The slowest average changeup velocity from any qualifying pitcher in the big leagues is 76. So this would basically be like the slowest changeup in the bigs. 2-2. Two -two. Grice strikes out on a chestnut changeup. The leaves runners aboard, but not before Cam Canarella absolutely unloaded on one. Yeah, boy, did he. Welcome back. Clemson leads three to nothing in the championship game. Ethan Darden back out on the mound, guys. And I wanted to tell you about the progression 
of him this season as a freshman. He started as the left-handed matchup guy, and then the short relief guy to the high leverage guy, he made spot starts, and then he became a weekend starter. And when we talked to Eric Backage earlier this year, he said he's mean enough. He's got that streak, right? He can be mean enough. And then when we talked to him pregame, I asked him, what are you expecting out of him? And he said, listen, it's like a closer situation. We're going to go out there, and it's going to be one inning at a time. But it's incredible what he's done all season long for Clemson and this staff, Mike. Yeah, I've never heard it explained just quite that way. And Eric Backage, to your point, Danny, he also said it has to do with the weather on that, that it just close out the first inning, close out the second inning. Now into the third, try to close that out as well, dealing with this weather. This one to left goes over the head of Will Taylor as Dom Patelli slices one to the wall and has a leadoff double for the Canes down three in the third in the title game. If you're a Kane fan, that's exactly what you want to see out of Dom Patelli. Letting that ball travel and hitting a line drive to left field. Taylor can't come up with it. He jumps up as high as he can, and Dom is able to get to second. But I think it's bigger than that because for Dom, he has been struggling a bit. You kind of see that front side open up. He's been trying to pull. But that time, he lets that ball get deep. Nice job of taking that pitch where it was pitched. And now Jacoby Long, center fielder in the nine spot with wheels. Trying to drop one down. And Long has been doing this, and we've seen him do it throughout this championship tournament. It's getting that bunt down and using your speed to get to first. They always talk about, hey, you know what never slumps? Speed. Mm. Speed never slumps because you can put that ball down on the ground. You can bunt. You can always work your way to first. And because of that, Wright is saying, well, you're going to have to swing this bat. I'm going to be on the grass. So no square from Jacoby Long that time. You can. I mean, once once you get a third baseman like Wright, who's really good over there at the hot corner, and he's playing so far in, now you got to hit it by him. 1-1. One, one. Long hits it hard. Pass Patelli and pass Blackwell into center. Patelli rounds third. Cantarellas throws. Not going to get him. And the Canes are on the board. That's a beautiful job by Jacoby Long. Again, he went to go bunt. You're going to play him in. Now I've got to swing the bat. And I love how he goes to the big part of the field. Worst case scenario here is Blackwell makes the play. You still get Patelli over. Best scenario is just what you saw there. Ball gets through. Patelli ends up scoring. And now you have a very fast runner at first in Long. For Jacoby Long, he's a junior, and it's only his ninth start of the season. So he's been around for three seasons with Miami, and yet coming into this game, only 98 career bets in 99 games. Because of the speed you talked about, a lot of times, especially this season, they brought him off the bench to run or to play the outfield because he's very good defensively as well. But now he's getting his chance here at the end of the season, and if he gets on base, he's going to stick in the lineup. And here's the thing, too. Gino has always looked at Jacoby Long as that guy that he just hasn't broken out yet. And then all of a sudden, now you're, he's getting the chance, and he's starting to do it. He's starting to swing it better. He's starting to get on base. He's using his attributes, that speed, to be able to get him there. Confidence comes into play as well, because now you're seeing him swing the bat very well also. Back to the top for C.J. Cathis. He did just have some guys run down to the Clemson bullpen. And in total contrast to Miami's pitching situation, Eric Package, pitching coach Jimmy Bellinger, they're well rested. They are well rested. I mean, you can thank uh, Caden Grice for last game to be able to give him that. I mean, once you get a starting pitcher who's able to go seven innings for you in the semifinal game and you don't really have to use many guys, you know that you're well set up in the championship game. CJ Capus takes down two and one to Miami's outstanding first baseman. Preseason third team All American according to D1 Baseball. And viewed as a draft pick in the first few rounds according to our expert Kylie McDaniel next month. Darden's 2 2. He's down. Full count on Capus. Oh, 
Garden steps back on with Long at first. And a check on Jacoby Long. You know, one of the things, too, Mike, when we talk about C.J. Kafis, you know, all eyes basically are on Yo-Yo Morales just because of what he's been doing. But coming into this game, C.J. Kafis has been nails as well, hitting over 400. He's got an OPS better than 1,000. He's been really productive throughout his career. Career OPS is 10.05. Career OBP is 451. Almost half the time he's getting called base with his ABs. That's incredible. 3 2. Hits Kafis. And the first three have reached for Miami here in the third. So double RBI single, hit batter. And now Edgardo Villegas struck out swinging on a slider his first time, and Darden pins a strike low in the zone. Here's the thing, too. When you look at a team like Miami, they are used to, you know, falling behind early, but they are also used to coming back. They have 19 comeback wins this year, so they don't mind being behind because they know that they are one swing away from doing it. You talked about the home runs and six guys having 10 plus home runs on the team. A lot of power, which means that there's a lot of damage that can be caused. Slice nice foul. And so big offense for Ethan Darden to face and a big stage in this ACC championship game. Davis pops it up. And then drifts out of play. Eric Backage said post game yesterday about his freshman starting pitcher. Well, we're finished with the academic calendar, so really he's no longer a freshman. He's a sophomore. Not to the players. To the players, you're still a freshman. You still, still carry gotta, bags. You still got to carry the bags. Maybe shine the shoes. <laughs> oh, two again. Wow, just missed from Darden. This looked like a really good pitch by Darden. Now it's off the plate. Just a really good job by Engel to bring that ball back. He got us. He tricked you, Mike. He didn't trick me. I just said, wow. I didn't, <laughs> I said, I didn't adjudicate <laughs> in either direction. <laughs> we were both in the same boat. That was a good pitch. Don't bring me down with you. <laughs> Two on, nobody out, one, two. Villegas stays alive. Last time out for Darden was last weekend against North Carolina on Thursday. She's had a long layoff. He was the opener of that final regular season series. He went four and two thirds of three run ball. One, two. Villegas yanks it foul. Danny told you all the different roles Darden has had. Started getting ACC starts in April. Went five shutdown. His first career ACC start in Tallahassee. A couple weeks later in Raleigh, six innings, one run against the Wolfpack. Ninth pitch of the AB is outside to Viegas. Wow, what a AB here by Viegas. Fouling pitches off, taking pitches that are just off the plate, just putting together a really good AB here in the top of the third. Pitch number 10. Vegas fouls off another. And that's what Miami ha has done this whole entire season, is they're going to continue to battle. They're going to comp continue to put up good ABs. Every single at-bat is a meaningful at-bat. 11th pitch of this AB. Left on left, too. 2-2. Two -two. Villegas stays alive again. We have seen this a few times from different guys in this tournament. We saw Cam Canarella have a 12-pitch A-B earlier in this tournament for Clemson. And just like I've said from the very beginning, when a hitter goes up there and has this type of at-bat, fouling pitches off, they see where that ball needs to be. Usually, it's an advantage hitter. Villegas, well around. 
Ryan wins the battle, and that is a massive first out for the freshman. What a pitch to Vegas, and yes, he did go around. Darden wins the battle. On the 12th pitch from the freshman to Miami's two-hitter, Eddie Viegas. And Eric Bakic is coming out, and he will make a move before Miami's headliner of those half-dozen double-digit home run hitters you mentioned comes up. I mean, this is a smart move here by Bakic for a couple reasons. One, you don't want that lefty-righty matchup. And two, you know that with one swing of the bat, this game can turn around very quickly because you have Yo-Yo Morales up with 16 home runs on the season. It's three straight right-hand hitters in this Miami lineup. So the righty Nick Clayton comes on after Ethan Darden just got a huge first out in this third inning. Clemson leads Miami by two in the ACC championship game. All right, so we said the righties are coming for Miami. And so Clemson and its pitching coach, Jimmy Bellinger, summons the veteran right-hander, Nick Clayton. And for Nick Clayton, basically a fastball slider com combo mix. He's going to stay down in the zone. His fastball will run into righties. The slider will break away, and he usually stays low. Yo-Yo Morales takes strike one on that sinking fastball at the knees. Look at the company Yo-Yo Morales is in. He is now tied on the career home run chart with your buddy Ryan Braun. Morales bounces this one to Blackwell. He gloves, got rid of it, just in time for the force out of Kathis. Two down. And that's why you bring in Nick Clayton, because you know you're going to get a ground ball. He throws a bunch of them with that sinker. Good job there by Blackwell to get it over to Bertram real quick to at least get that force out. Super experienced right-hander now faces the freshman cleanup man for the Canes, Blake Sear. Like Morales, 16 home runs. It's one of the best freshman home run hitting seasons in Canes history. They're at the corners with two outs. Sinker low. When you're facing a guy that has a good sinker like Nick Clayton does, you really have to get him up because anything that he throws down so much action to it you're just going to beat it right down into the ground this one kicks away from Ingle and long scores to make it a one-run game on a wild pitch Miami inches closer this is the second time that we've seen Jacoby Long score on either a pass ball or a wild pitch. Cooper Ingold, he tries to get over, can't get his body there enough because he does have that knee down. So he couldn't get around that baseball to knock it in front of him. It actually hits off that chest protector sideways off and Long is able to score. That's a strike to Sear. Struck out swinging his first time. To one. This is outside from Clayton. Clayton changed his arm slot prior to the season and it's paid dividends for him. Eric Back just said he's got incredible metrics with the movement of the fastball from this slot. 3-1. Sear pulls it on a hop. Blackwell bobbles, recovers, and throws out Sear. Miami is on the board with two in the third. Clemson's into the pen. A good one going in the ACC title game. Welcome back to the 2023 ACC Baseball Championship. From the DBAP, home of the Bulls in Durham, AAA affiliate of the Tampa Bay Rays. We go to the bottom of the third in this 
titanic showdown between two of the 11 best teams in the country. A couple of top four seeds in the ACC. Clemson jumped out to the lead with two runs in the first, another in the second. And Gabby Sanchez, the Canes are on the board. The Canes are on the board. They are. What a, that was a big third inning for them. And it started off with their shortstop, Don Patelli. We talked to Gino, we talked to JD, and it was like, he's, if when he gets going, the team is different. Yeah, that's exactly what pitching coach J.D. Arteaga said to us. Billy Amick strokes this one into right, and Zach Levinson runs it down. So a quick first out for Ben Chestnut against one of the best bats in the ACC. And that's exactly what Ben Chestnut needed. You start to look at that pitch count, 67 pitches. They know they need him to go deep into this game because they really don't have much in their bullpen. So it's one of those things, just like you said, Gino said, if we can get four, be ecstatic. Not sure Gino Damari was expecting a 36 pitch first and a 30 pitch second, but Chestnut has settled in here somewhat into the third. And Bertram takes a breaking ball, and it's nothing in two on Bertram with the run scoring single into center back in the first. And we talk about that pitching staff. How about this, Mike? with Ben Chestnut going two innings now. They have nine different pitchers who have each pitched at least two innings in this championship. Nine. Whereas Clemson, like we said, well rested. They got the great start from Caden Grice yesterday. Previously got a very nice start as well from Austin Gordon Friday in the win over BC. He went six shutout and only two hits. And then behind him in that Friday game to punch a ticket to the semis. Closer Ryan Ammons got his fifth save. Tigers used a lot of arms Wednesday against the Hokies. 2-2. Two -two. And Bertram strikes out. Two quick ones for Chestnut here in the third. Game six of the Western Conference Finals is Monday night at 8 Eastern in the NHL on ESPN. And ESPN Plus, the Stars yesterday with a 4-2 win last night. Tied to Landria, a couple of goals in the third. And so the series, Titans against Jack Eichel in Vegas. You can watch the point at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN2. Who do they play if they win? Uh, team you're a fan of, oh, I reckon. Wow. Is it the Panthers? Yeah. Oh, baby. Blake Wright, the batter. Matthew Kachuk right now Ooh. is everywhere. He is every, I mean, he's amazing. He I, met him, I met him in person. Um, very, like, really nice dude. It's weird because you see him playing hockey, and he's a fighter. He's an agitator. <laughs> and then you see him in person like the sweetest guy that you can be. What a leader he's been Oh yeah, for the Panthers. Dispatch the Canes. 2-1. Just down, three balls and a strike on the aggressive veteran and captain Blake Wright. Chestnuts 3 1. Wright walks. Two out base runner and just more traffic on the base pads for Clemson. It's not been a 1 2 3 inning yet. And that's why they're where they're at because it's kind of what you see game in and game out. Baggage has these guys just working counts, putting pressure on the pitchers, putting pressure on the defense, stealing bases. When I started to look at the numbers on stolen bases, you look at Clemson, they were 12 for 12 entering this game. Miami didn't even attempt a stolen base yet. Yeah, very different styles. Pitch count at 79 for Ben Chestnut. So Carlos Perez is going to walk this one out. You saw Chris Sinta, left-hander for Miami, starting to throw in the pen. And this will not be an expedited conversation between these two. <laughs> Where did Danny go? I'm guessing in that dugout. I'm in... I'm in the third base dugout. How you I'm doing? over here with Clemson. It's all right. We're good. Oh, just I see. Spitting a little bit. I just see. spitting. Just spitting. That annoyance rain <laughs> that Gabby talks about. I got you guys. Thanks. All right, Ben Blackwell readies and takes high. 
2 0 after the mound visit. Crescenta is starting to accelerate his throw. You got righty here, righty on deck, and then it's lefty, lefty, righty, lefty. Three of the first four in the Clemson lineup. This is a shot in the left. Blackwell stings one. It's a two out hit and back to back two out base runners for the Tigers up a run. And again, I mean, this team is just incredible the way that they just go out there. The at bats that they put together always seeming to get guys in scoring position almost every single inning. Out of the nine spot for the freshman right fielder Jack Crichton. Number six. Got a start against BC a couple of days ago. It was two for three, drove in a pair, had a double. Made it 4-0 early in that game, and then Clemson hung on late. And then Crichton came off the bench for Cooper Engel after Engel had that foul ball sequence off himself. Crichton will come over for a conversation with his head coach. Eric Backage talks so much about the mental side of the game for his program. He told us yesterday, he spends the entire month of October on that. And then you work on it every day from there and a big focus. And so he wants to have some calming words for his freshman. He's had some swing and miss the last two days. Yeah, had a couple of swings and misses. Just kind of talking to him, trying to get him to calm down in this big situation here because Miami just finished putting up two in the top. And there's a way to get that momentum back. And when a team scores, you want to come up and you want to get that scoring done. So it's just basically talking with them just to calm the nerves down just a little bit. Words of encouragement. Hey, go get them. You're awesome. You got this. One one. And Crichton hits it well in the right. Levinson retreats and he's got room. Chestnut labors in the third, but leaves two and puts up a zero and keeps this a one-run game. Welcome back. We got a tie ball game. I'm with Miami head coach Gino Damari. Coach, how have you seen your team's approach change throughout this game to tie it up? Well, we had two totally different pitchers. The left-hander, obviously, he's got a different, coming from a different side, different angle. Um, you know, the guy that came in here right now, Zach was able to get inside the ball. He's got a little, you know, side three-quarter to him. So, little sink, little run. He was able to backspin it, get inside it. It's a good job of our guys battling back and tying it up. As far as the mound, Chestnut comes out. What can we see now? Well, they got, you know, they're going left, left, right, left here. So, we're going to bring in a lefty here for these guys here, for these first four hitters. And it's, it's, uh, we're going to the bullpen, obviously. So, we're hoping to get some good innings from our guys out of the bullpen. Coach, thank you. All right, thank you. Mike, Gabby. That was a revealing chuckle and comment from Gino Damari about how he's going to have to piece together the pitching over the course of the rest of this game. And the first guy he turns to in relief is the freshman lefty, Chris Sinta. Yeah, he, he, he just finished saying it. He knows he had a couple lefties coming up, so you're going to go ahead and bring in Sinta, who has a good fastball slider mix. He does throw a changeup as well. But it's one of those situations where it's whoever is available is going to have to come up and come up big, especially now all of a sudden. It's a new ball game, Mike. It's 3-3. Three to three and you're looking for somebody to come up big. Sinta is ninth on the staff in innings pitched. Has only pitched against an ACC opponent one time in the last month. And now he's got to deal with the hottest team in the country, maybe, and its top four hitters. Starting with Cam Canarella, leadoff man who's walked and homered. His home run, we told you, 108 miles an hour off the bat. Mm. Zach Levinson's, 112. Two balls match just two balls that were crushed two balls that right off the bat we knew were home runs and here's the thing too i don't care where you are in this clemson lineup there really is no easy spot because all these guys up and down the lineup are going to put together really good ab's and i mean that you have to give credit to back for getting these guys in that right frame of mind Breaking ball, trickled back to Sinta. Takes care of Cantarella. One away. 
Step one of three among the three lefties that loom for the freshman Chris Sinta. Brings up the tough Cooper Engel. Perfect game had Engel as a preseason third team All-American coming off a great sophomore season. Eric Bankage has told us it's just a leap bat to ball skills, line to line, quick bat, and Engel can make late decisions as a hitter, which we saw in the second when he went the opposite way. I mean, we even go back to yesterday's game. He started off three for three in his first three at bats in the first three innings. How about that? Nice. <laughs> Must be nice. Finishing off, of course, with that base hit up the middle after he just fouled one off his knee. Ball and a strike from Sinta. Throw it, Chris. Throw the ball. Let's go. I believe that was the voice of Gino Damari. Gino Damari. He's telling Chris to throw the ball. Let's go. He does. Angle slaps it. Late decision. Bat stays in the zone. Into the left field corner. And Cooper Angle does what Cooper Angle does. I mean, it's so impressive what he is able to do with that bat. His bat-to-ball skill is incredible. And you can see that he is still in pain with that knee, that front knee of his. But it doesn't hurt him as he's running. You can see it's kind of grimacing. You kind of feel it. You see his face. But, boy, just being able to do that line drive to left field, double running hard and then yeah i'm gonna do what we need to do i gotta do our little dance at second but man this does not feel good and it's the soreness you have a little bit of swelling probably a little bit of a bone bruise it does hurt it's playable but that just shows his toughness as well will taylor's up and will taylor has been aboard in eight straight plate appearances over the last two days Wow. All six times yesterday, three hits, three walks. Today, infield single and a walk the first two innings. After both times, he ran the count full. Hits it hard to third. Morales backhand pick rises. Rockets gets him. <laughs> Yo-Yo Morales been putting on a show the last couple days at third. Well, what's funny is, is that when you talk to scouts, a lot of them might say, you know, the only hit that Yo-Yo might have is maybe defense I have been watching him play third base and I haven't seen him play third base poorly at all I have him as an above average third baseman because he continues to make plays like that it's impressive his his skills with his glove and then he just could come up and fire over the first base Really nice play in the ninth inning last night. Also had a great turn on a 6-5-3 double play. Don't see that much. Left on left for Caden Grice, and it's a ball and a strike. With Grice batting with, hold on. Yep, yep. it's a runner in scoring position. <laughs> and Cooper Engle with two outs. <laughs> left on left, Grice still has a 957 OPS this year, and he's hit five. Left on left home runs. Slices it foul. Also a 293 batting average with runners in scoring position, which we have seen. It seems like every single time he comes up, he has a guy in scoring position. So when you look at an average of 293, that's not over like a couple of ABs. He's had a ton just in this ACC championship tournament alone. Sinta with a long look, now the one-two. And Grice rolls it gently to first. Kaith is scoops, and it goes. Cooper Engel double. Chris Sinta enters and delivers for Miami. 3-3 three, three hour score, some good love work behind Sinta. Wow, what a play here by Yo-Yo Morales. Catches, spins, turn, check the runner. Strike to first. Welcome back. We got a tie ball game. I'm with Miami head coach Gino Damari. Coach, how have you seen your team's approach change throughout this game to tie it up? Well, we had two totally different pitchers. The left-hander, obviously, he's got a different 
coming from a different side, different angle. Um, you know, the guy that came in here right now, Zach was able to get inside the ball. He's got a little, you know, side three quarter to him. So little sink, little run. He was able to backspin it, get inside it. It's a good job of our guys battling back and tying it up. As far as the mound, Chestnut comes out. What can we see now? Well, they got, you know, they're going left, left, right, left here. So we're going to bring in a lefty here for these guys here, for these first four hitters. And it's, it's, uh, we're going to the bullpen, obviously. So we're hoping to get some good innings from our guys out of the bullpen. Coach, thank you. All right, thank you. Mike, Gabby. That was a revealing chuckle and comment from Gino Damari about how he's going to have to piece together the pitching over the course of the rest of this game. And the first guy he turns to in relief is the freshman lefty, Chris Sinta. Yeah, he, he, he just finished saying it. He knows he had a couple lefties coming up, so you're going to go ahead and bring in Sinta, who has a good fastball slider mix. He does throw a changeup as well. But it's one of those situations where it's whoever is available is going to have to come up and come up big, especially now all of a sudden. It's a new ball game, Mike. It's 3-3, three to three, and you're looking for somebody to come up big. Sinta is ninth on the staff in innings pitched, has only pitched against an ACC opponent one time in the last month. And now he's got to deal with the hottest team in the country, maybe, and its top four hitters. Starting with Cam Canarella, leadoff man who's walked in Homer. His home run, we told you, 108 miles an hour off the bat. Mm. Zach Levinson's 112. Two balls. <laughs> Just two balls that were crushed. Two balls that right off the bat, we knew were home runs. And here's the thing, too. I don't care where you are in this Clemson lineup. There really is no easy spot because all these guys up and down the lineup are going to put together really good ABs. And, I mean, that you have to give credit to Backage for getting these guys in that right frame of mind. Breaking ball trickled back to Sinta. Takes care of Cantarella. One away. Step one of three among the three lefties that loom for the freshman Chris Sinta. Brings up the tough Cooper Engel. Perfect game had Engel as a preseason third team All American coming off a great sophomore season. Eric Bankage has told us it's just elite bat to ball skills line to line, quick back, and Engel can make late decisions as a hitter, which we saw in the second when he went the opposite way. I mean, we even go back to yesterday's game. He started off three for three in his first three at-bats in the first three innings. How about that? Nice. <laughs> Must be nice. Finishing off, of course, with that base hit up the middle after he just fouled one off his knee. Ball and a strike from Sinta. Throw it, Chris. Throw the ball. Let's go. I believe that was the voice of Gino Damari. Gino Damari. He's telling Chris to throw the ball. Let's go. He does. Angle slaps it. Late decision. Bat stays in the zone. Into the left field corner. And Cooper Angle does what Cooper Angle does. Hey, I mean, it's so impressive. What he is able to do with that bat. His bat to ball skill is incredible. And you can see that he is still in pain with that knee, that front knee of his. But it doesn't hurt him as he's running. You can see it's kind of grimacing. You kind of feel it. You see his face. But boy, just being able to do that line drive to left field, double running hard and then yeah i'm gonna do what we need to do i gotta do our little dance at second but man this does not feel good and it's the soreness you have a little bit of swelling probably a little bit of a bone bruise it does hurt it's playable but that just shows his toughness as well will taylor's up and will taylor has been aboard in eight straight plate appearances over the last two days wow all six times yesterday, three hits, three walks. Today, infield single and a walk the first two innings after both times he ran the count full. Hits it hard to third. Morales backhand pick, rises, Rockets, gets him. Yo-Yo <laughs> Morales been putting on a show the last couple days at third. Well, what's funny is, is that 
when you talk to scouts, a lot of them might say, you know, the only hit that Yo-Yo might have is maybe defense. I have been watching him play third base, and I haven't seen him play third base poorly at all. I have him as an above average third baseman because he continues to make plays like that. It's impressive. His his skills with his glove and then he just can come up and fire over the first base. Made a really nice play in the ninth inning last night. Also had a great turn on a 6-5-3 six, six, five. double play. Don't see that much. Left on left for Caden Grice, and it's a ball and a strike. With Grice batting with, hold on, yep, yep, it's a runner in scoring position. <laughs> and Cooper Engel with two outs. <laughs> left on left, Grice still has a 9.57 OPS this year, and he's hit five left on left home runs. Slices it foul. Also a 2.93 batting average with runners in scoring position, which we have seen. It seems like every single time he comes up, he has a guy in scoring position. So when you look at an average of 293, that's not all for like a couple of ABs. He's had a ton just in this ACC championship tournament alone. Sent it with a long look, now the one, two. And Grice rolls it gently to first. Kaith is scoops, and it over. Cooper Engel double. Chris Sinta enters. And delivers for Miami. 3-3 three, three hour score. Some good glove work behind Sinta. Wow, what a play here by Yo-Yo Morales. Catches, spins, turn, check the runner. Strike to first. Fifth inning on the way at the ACC Championship. Alongside Gabby Sanchez and Danny Waxelman, I'm Mike Monaco and our entire crew behind the scenes. This game produced by Matt Bartley and directed by Kyle Brown. Shout out to the great men and women of our crew who have been here the entire week, going back as far as Monday, working every game to bring it to you on our ESPN family of networks for the first time. Every game up until this point on ACC Network. It's been a great ride with a lot of good teammates. It has been. I mean, what a great group that we get to work with and go have dinner with, hang out with. Just amazing family. Our production crew since Tuesday bringing you 14 games. This is my seventh, I believe. A pretty hardworking guy. Yeah, well, got to do what we got to do. Kobe Long leads off in the fifth in a 3-3 game in the title game. 9-1 and 2 for the Canes against Nick Clayton. Road to Omaha, getting rolling. Selection show tomorrow, regionals next weekend, supers to follow. And then two weeks in God's country, Nebraska. <laughs> There's a strike, 3-0 to Long. Both these teams have aspirations and the ability to get to Omaha in two proud programs. Long laces it. Right field, second hit of the ball game out of the ninth spot for Jacoby Long to set the table for Miami as the lineup flips over. Boy, that's exactly what you want to do against a pitcher like Nick Clayton. A guy with a really good sinker that's trying to get that ball down. You're trying to beat him to a spot, staying inside of it, hitting the inside part of the baseball, meaning that baseball is gonna be coming into a righty. I wanna keep my hands close and tight to my body, hit that inside part, and drive it just like he did to the big part of the field. That's how you can have success against a pitcher like Nick Clayton. So C.J. Kafis, who's been on twice, steps in. First pitch swinging, end of the bat to right, and Jack Crichton for the first down. Talking about these well-decorated programs. Clemson's won an ACC Best 10 ACC championship titles, the last time in 2016 when there was also weather involved in that one. And then he got 
Miami and all the history of the Canes program as well. Now for Miami, they haven't even reached the ACC championship game since 2012. Long goes in, Long steals second. Great jump, he can fly, and it's Miami's first stolen bag of this week. It's one of those situations where Gino knows it's time to put some pressure on, and you see the slide. It's a little awkward. He didn't get those hands out, almost stuck himself into the ground, but luckily he's fast and is able to glide into second. Gino Damari says, Jacoby Long is the kind of player that I love. Speed, dynamic, can run, he can bunt, can play defense like we talked about earlier. And getting his chance late in the year. Grabs the outside corner to Villegas. Staying on it, Clayton. Nick Clayton, we told you, is battle tested in his career. There was a time earlier this year when Eric Package said we weren't expecting Nick Clayton to be our most valuable bullpen guy, but it's exactly what he had emerged into at that point. Two two. It's another foul. It's that fight right now, Miami. Last couple of innings have been able to put runs on the board. Jacoby Long, big hit, stealing second in scoring position. See if they can do it again for the third straight inning. Two two. Yeah. And just strikes out. Nick Clayton does a disappearing act with that changeup. What a changeup. That thing out of the hand looks just like his fastball. Look at the action on that pitch. Starts right at the top of the knees. Wow, falls right off the table. What a pitch. Oh, he just got a delivery up in the booth. <laughs> Six foot eight. Notre Dame's all-time leading shot blocker, our great colleague Jordan Cornett just delivered you some Slim Jims. Oh, you sure did. For the high pressure pack moment right here. I'm gonna snap into one right now. They intentionally walked Yo-Yo Morales to get the force in play for Blake Sear. You wouldn't want to face Yo-Yo in the way he's going right now. So instead, Nick Clayton will try the freshman who we got to ground to short his first time. These two met back in the third. 1-0. Sear pulls it. Left field base hit. Miami takes the lead in the fifth. Morales races to third and stops there. And Blake Sear, Hollywood, comes through. I was just going to say, a lot of times, a hitter who comes up, they know that you're going to go ahead and intentionally walk Yo-Yo Morales, some guy in scoring position with two outs. But they take it personally. And for Blake Sear says, you want to walk him, that's fine. But I'm going to go up there and I'm going to get this big knock. And what a big double that was. RBI puts Miami ahead four to three. Gino Damari says, you turn on the lights, there's certain guys that it just clicks. Yep. And early on in the season, that's how Blake Sears stepped onto the collegiate scene with a ton of confidence, Danny. Yeah, that's right. And back in the fall, Gino Damari said he played okay in the scrimmages. You know, it's hard to hit one out in Miami in the fall, but he's done just that. And it's been his attitude, his mentality, and his quick bat. Those are the things that have really stood out to this team. And, and I asked him, I said, has he exceeded your expectations here? And he said, yeah, he's absolutely exceeded them. And, and a fun note, because you guys were talking about Ryan Braun earlier. Right now, Blake Sear, there's only three players that have hit more home runs as freshmen in Miami's history. That's Ryan Braun, Phil Lang, Pat Burrell, Mike, Gabby. Uh, not bad as far as company goes. You, you played with Ryan Braun, a classmate of yours. What was he like as a freshman? Well, I mean, very 
he he knew how good he was. Let's ah, put it that okay. way. I'm not going to use the other word, but he knew how good he was. But a lot of times, that's what you need. That's why he was such a good baseball player because nothing really got to him. And that's kind of like how you see from Sear. Nothing really gets to him. He goes out there. If he has a bad AB, doesn't really matter. He is ready to hit the next time. Eric Backage will come out and make a pitching change. Blake Sear comes through, gives Miami the lead. They have scored four unanswered runs in this game. And now Tristan Smith will come on for Nick Clayton. The ACC championship game has come down to this. Two of the 11 highest ranked teams in the country. Clemson headed toward a national seed. Miami's hoping for the same. They're going to make it really interesting if they win this game. Smith comes on. A change here with Miami in front in this fifth inning. Clayton followed the starter, Ethan Darden. And now it'll be Smith. Man, for Smith, it's just a good fastball change of slider mix. He'll throw all three. But we'll talk a little bit more about him when we come back after the break. Too. They have been hot. They have just finished beating Wake Forest, the number one team in the country. So they're riding high. Boy, this is going to be a good one. Here is Zach Levinson, who's had himself a really nice week here in Durham, both with the bat and with the glove. Fine diving catch at the end of the game yesterday against Wake Forest. We had two in scoring position. Cuts through a fastball below the knees. Nothing in two right out of the shoot from Smith. And Smith does have that good fastball. And what he really does good with it is he locates down in the zone because then he can come back with that changeup that he has. It's really, really good depth to it. Stuck with the heater at 91. Smith went an inning against Carolina yesterday in semis he's thrown the fifth most innings this year we promised you that clemson's well rested three of their top five guys in innings are the three pitchers they've used so far levinson fouls this one off thing is too if you're facing levinson it's going to be a lot of fastballs 406 of his 538 pitches that he's thrown has been the heater so you know majority of the pitches you're going to get is that fastball but every once in a while he'll throw that change up down and get you out in front oh two is away Cooper Engel to throw down to second, even if he's tempted. Levinson skies this one, and it fades foul, first base side. Well, you just finished seeing a couple pitches ago, actually. Engel look over to third. Yo Yo oh, is to out third. there, and he went to go pick, but no, he was also talking about second, too. They're trying to tell him, get off, because do you want a base hit to be able to score? If Engel throws behind you, that's five, because you're going to have Yo Yo Morales trying to score from, from third. One, two. Ends up high. 
So it's one of those situations with two outs, you being the base runner at second, you're going to just gain more and more ground because you're not worried about that back pick. Engel encouraging the freshman lefty with a 2-2. Levinson drives it foul again. All fastballs so far. Haven't thrown one off-speed pitch yet. I mean, that's kind of what you get out of Tristan Smith, a whole bunch of fastballs. Gino Damari describes Zach Levinson as a professional hitter, very consistent in his approach. 2-2 to him, is down. And a quality A-B from Levinson to run it full. And here's the thing, too. There is a base open. Zach Levinson being the righty. You have Renzo Gonzalez behind, who is a lefty. So you do not have to throw a strike here. You can try to maybe throw something off the plate and see if Levinson will chase. Tenth pitch misses. Levinson coaxes a walk. And they are loaded for Miami up a run in the title game. And that's a situation where it's very smart there by Tristan Smith because the last thing that you want is a guy like Zach Levinson to be the one to beat you, righty versus a lefty. Especially when you have a guy like Renzo Gonzalez who is on deck so you can make it a lefty-lefty matchup. It is left on left against Renzo Gonzalez who came through Friday against Duke in a clutch spot. They intentionally walked Yo-Yo Morales with two outs. Blake Sear made Clemson pay. And then Zach Levinson, 10 pitches after a couple innings earlier, Eddie Villegas had a 12-pitch war, won by Ethan Darden. And now Jimmy Bellinger strolls out to visit with Smith. This is basically to calm Smith down. And that's the thing. You know that he's going to throw a lot of fastballs. I guarantee you that that's already been told to Renzo Gonzalez. But for Tristan Smith to be successful, you have to throw and fill up that strike zone. Sunday Night Baseball, tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Coverage starts at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown ahead of the Phillies and the Braves from Truist Park one of the great venues in Major League Baseball. Mike up, man, also, that's been really cool. Inside 2-0, oh, Lorenzo Gonzalez. Tristan Smith's been pretty tough on lefties, only a 224 average against him. That's inside 3-0. There is nowhere to put Renzo Gonzalez. Uh, and here's the thing, too. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Gino says, you know what? We're not only going to take one, we'll take two. You're going to have to throw two strikes over before I let Renzo Gonzalez swing this baseball bat. There's one of them. So you do it again if you were Gino? Yeah. I think Gino is just basically telling them, hey, be smart. We have a runner on third. There's bases loaded. 3-1. Up high. And Miami leads by two. Third walk of the inning. And second in a row. Wow, this is something that we have not seen from Clemson and their bullpen. And it's going up and walking, guys. This ball is up and out. And there is something to be said about being in a situation where in the ACC Baseball Championship finale, a lot of pressure, big situation. And now Carlos Perez. If you were to handpick a moment to bust out of a slump, this would be it for Carlos Perez, who's 0 for 16 with eight punch outs in the tournament. And had a fine regular season with the bat. Carried a big load behind the plate for the Canes. But boy, Smith attacking in with the fastball to get ahead, nothing and two. And it's one of those situations where Perez might be overthinking himself rather than what he was doing during the regular season, just staying on that baseball. 0-2. Perez spoils it. 
the fastball. I'm surprised that they wanted to go away because usually against a righty, a guy who has been struggling, you want to throw that ball in. You want him to try to open up to hit these pitches. If you throw it out over the plate, you're giving him a chance to drive a baseball. 0-2. Oh, Inside, and it didn't miss by much. And that's where you should want to live, right on that inside part of the plate. Not easy for a hitter, especially one who has been struggling as of late, to hit that pitch. One, two. Strike three called. Tristan Smith dots 92 at the knees to leave him loaded. What a pitch by Tristan Smith. Fastball, probably a little down, but gets the call for the strikeout. In the last week, and you see at the bottom, most recently in a game that you could have watched earlier on ESPN2 and ESPN News, Tulane in the American with 40 losses took down East Carolina to win the American tournament. It's the most losses by any tournament team in Division I history, and the green wave is in. That goes to show you, it doesn't matter what you've done before. It's tournament baseball, and whoever's hot at the end gets it. Oregon beat Arizona to win the Pac-12 tournament last night on ESPN2. Billy Amick grounds it to Blake Sear, and Sear throws him out with the stretch of Kafis helping on the backside. One away in the bottom of the fifth. What a play by Blake Sear. This ball bounces over the head of Chris Anton. Boom, here comes Sear. Strong throw over to first to get in. It's close. But I think he got him by about eh, less than half a step. Ah, did Kafis' foot come off, though? No, he was off. You don't think so? No. We'll see. Maybe he is. Riley Bertram with one out, no one off. See that foot. Okay, makes the play. Look, foot looks like it's on. Definitely gets there before you. Well, maybe not that angle. <laughs> that angle showed out. CJ Cape is fine defensively, and Blake's here maybe more known for his bat. Comes up with a nifty defensive play to prevent Billy Amick out of the heart of the Clemson lineup getting on. Bertram bounces one. It's more routine. Two down. Down to Danny Rexelman. Yeah, guys, just moments ago when they were coming up to bat, Rocco Reed called everyone over and said, guys, let's just do what we do. Just do what we do. And then Riley Bertram, I know we just got out there, but he said, don't panic. Don't panic. This team, they've done this all season long. So a little positivity going on in the Clemson dugout, guys. Uh, what they call an energy Sunday. <laughs> Danny was asking Eric Bankage about that in their pregame interview. We were out there. Yeah. I got pumped <laughs> listening to them the way that they were going about their business in center field. Blake Wright takes to make it 2-0. And, and that's a thing, too. When you're a team, and I've been a part of teams that go through winning streaks and, and you feel like you're untouchable and you can't lose. It doesn't matter when you fall behind. Guys just look at one another and you're just like, yeah, we got this. We know it. The confidence is there. Brandon. This is a battle test at Clemson team. Remember early in the year, Eric Backage using a term that he's reiterated throughout the season, that they have calloused their minds through the close losses and the adversity and staring down an unsightly record for that Clemson team early on. Remember, two and eight in the ACC, 17 and 14 overall after they dropped their opener against Florida State. And entering that weekend, it had been a lot of close losses. They fell in that one to the Seminoles and they've just obliterated ACC foes since. I mean, we talk about Wake Forest and what they've done all year. I mean, look at what Clemson has done after starting two and eight. I mean, been unbeatable in ACC play. Pulled off a hidden ball trick. 
in the next game of that Florida State series. Is, and then that's it. Who knows? You lose that game. In. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Things could be different. <laughs> it, took, it took a hidden ball trick to get right back on track. Right walk. Now Ben Blackwell. Eric Backett said recently he wants his team, even though now they're ranked sixth in the country, and as Danny told you, projected number four national seed to keep playing like they've got house money. They trail by two, though, after five as Blackwell grounds out to Morales. Eric Backett and the Tigers trail to the sixth. Welcome back to the ACC Baseball Championship. From the DBAP in Durham, North Carolina, Gabby Sanchez, Danny Wexelman, I'm Mike Monaco, our entire crew behind the scenes, and Miami, and Clemson. Kane's up by two. They've scored the last five in this game as we embark on the sixth inning. A couple teams headed to the NCAA tournament. And we will see what the seeding is like less than 24 hours from now. 8-9-1 and one for Miami against Tristan Smith. He doesn't miss by much. To start out, the Miami shortstop, Dom Patelli. Doubled and scored back in the third and then grounded back to the mound. 2-0. Smith got a big strikeout. Backwards K of Carlos Perez that might not have looked the call as you indicated, but Smith was able to bear down after back-to-back -back walks. And here's the thing, too. When you look at Don Patelli and, and the way that he could swing this bat, look how they're playing him. So you have third base up and everybody else. Look at that whole entire side that he has open for him for a hit. And those are the things that Dom's going to have to work on, especially next level. A high four-pitch walk. Third walk issued in a span of four batters from Tristan Smith. Brings up Jacoby Long. And boy, what a game Jacoby Long has had so far. And I wouldn't be surprised now if Gino is putting down another bunt. It's a guy who can handle the bat at the plate. He can put that bunt down. But then he's also shown that he can swing that baseball bat and use that speed. Eric Backich will make a pitching change. He'll go to Jackson Lindley here in the sixth inning. Well-rested Clemson pitching staff, as we told you. And so the Tigers able to turn to Lindley here in the sixth. Miami leads by two. They've got the leadoff man on here in Durham. Jacoby Long is coming up for Miami, and he is part of some outstanding defense and center we've seen. This was a couple of days ago. Clemson center fielder Cam Canarello robbing one late in the game against Boston College. And how about long yesterday against Wake Forest? Wow, that long play there goes up, robs it. Look at the ball comes out, stays with it, makes the play. I mean, you have two center fielders who can just flat out go get the baseball. Danny? Oh my gosh, you guys, yesterday in that game, you know, the rain's coming down, it's so dramatic. The ball is struck so well, and Long goes up and grabs it. Gabby said, pops out of his glove and ends up being number four on Sports Center top 10. How about that? Yesterday, I feel like Miami could have had the entire top 10 dedicated to their <laughs> defense. I mean, Zach Levinson ends the game. Yo-Yo Morales, we talked about what he did. I mean, his picks, what he's done with his glove. The gold gloves yesterday for Miami were out in full force, guys. Yeah, it was maybe one of the best defensive games they've played. We told you earlier, Gino Damari told his team afterward, probably their best overall game of the season. And here's Long against Lindley. Cam Canarella, by the way, he haven't been with us throughout this tournament, throughout this season, we've told his story. Natural infielder, forced into outfield duty due to injuries. And he has played gold glove level defense out in center for Eric Package and the Tigers. We asked Eric Package yesterday, do you think he's ever going to play the infield again? <laughs> Eric Package said, never say never, but I don't think so. <laughs> that's, that's how good he has played in center field, where 
you had the head coach saying, we put him out there because we needed a spot. He needed to play. And I put him in center field because it's easier than playing the corners. You're going to have the balls are going to be a little bit straighter. They're not going to have that kind of run. And now it's like, can't take him out of center field. Bunt bid and long came up empty, two and two. Back to you, Danny. Yeah, guys, by the way, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, Cam's middle name is Glover. So it just adds to the intrigue, huh? That's perfect. Long lifts it to right, way back to the track and caught by Jack Crichton. Patelli moves up and Jacoby Long almost went oppo. Wow, Long does almost go oppo. He can't put the butt down to get him over. Hits this ball extremely well. Crichton goes back up against the wall. Great base running by Dom Patelli. Tagging up from first and getting himself to second. So couldn't get the bunt down, but still got him over. So man in scoring position with one out for the leadoff man, CJ Kafis. Takes a Lindley fastball for a strike. Kafis on twice by way of a hit by pitch and an infield single his first time. Breaking ball fouled off. Lindley, another veteran guy, just like Clayton earlier in this outing. Now four pitchers for Clemson used. Capus stays alive. Man, Capus has done a good job with runners in scoring position, hitting 377 this year. So he's a guy that knows how to handle the bat. He's had himself a really nice baseball championship tournament as well. Facing one of the Clemson captains in Lindley. And he strikes out Kafis. Knee-high fastball in the first K for Lindley is out number two in the sixth. Boy, that's a good fastball right on the outside corner. That ball is a strike. You can see that Ingold is off the plate, but look how he has to reach back to get that. That is a strike. Great pitch. Lindley trying to keep this a two-run deficit for the Tigers. Backdoor breaker. That's a beauty. And that's a pitch that over the course of his career has improved a lot. Made a real big jump with that pitch. Headed into last season. Throws another good one. Wow. That's a good pitch. Good breaking ball right on the inside corner underneath the hands of Villegas. 0-2. Right back to it with another breaker. I wouldn't be surprised here if Lindley now elevates that fastball up, and it's just going to be for show, just to move the ball around to then be able to go back to that breaking ball. Fastball's gotten some swing and miss for Lindley this season. 1-2. Breaking ball again, and Villegas pokes it in the air down the left field line, and... Drops foul in the Clemson pen. Not many guys are able to hit that breaking ball by Lindley. Only a 136 average on that pitch. He only a half dozen hits on it all year. The bulk of his strikeouts on it. One, two, back to it, Villegas pulls it. That is foul, barely. I don't know how Villegas was even able to stay inside this pitch like he did and still line this ball to right and miss being a hit by just barely anything. Almost hits off the glove of Caton Grice, where if it does hit off the glove, of course, that ball would be a hit. But man, how he's able to just stay inside. That ball is about a ball and a half in off the plate and still being able to hit it hard to right field, almost keeping it fair. And it's second, two outs. One, two from Lindley. There he was elevating the fastball. The 
Mayugas is punched out three times. 2-2. Two, two. Strike three called. Jackson Lindley bears down. Tristan Smith did it in the fifth. Lindley delivers in the sixth. Miami and Clemson in the title game. The Canes got here by beating Wake Forest, and they did it with defense, too. I mean, look at that play by Long. Robbing a home run, staying with it. How about this? You never see this. A 6-5-3 double play. And how about to end the game? Levinson, full diving catch to make the play. Look at this trio. <laughs> oh, man. Just, I mean, just great defensive players right there. And Yo-Yo at third base, what he's been able to do at the hot corner the last couple of games has been just phenomenal. A little behind the scenes inside baseball for the television nerds out there. That's called a three box, a three box? that we just showed. Yeah. Director Kyle Brown is just all over it. He's awesome. Jack Crichton, the batter against a new Miami pitcher. Rape Schlesinger comes on because yet again those Clemson left-hand bats at the top of the lineup are looming after the nine-man Crichton here. Schlesinger only got an out yesterday, so available to come back today. And he tapes one to the inside corner to Crichton. Some funk from the arm slot of Schlesinger. Pulled by Crichton in the left and to the track. And Viegas, one away. How about where they're setting up? I mean, I know analytics has a lot to do with placement of guys are playing, but they had Viegas playing exactly where Crichton hit that baseball. That ball should have been in the gap when you're playing a normal defense. Unbelievable. Now left on left, here's Cam Cantarella. Clemson's top three hitters a combined four for seven. Uh, the seven hits Clemson's got today. Cantarella juiced a home run in the second. Just outside, 2-0. Oh. Miami's down a couple of lefties as well. Who were injured early on before they got rolling this year. And so, still been able to go to Sinta and Schlesinger in this game. Austin Crowther had Tommy John in February. And Miles Caba also had TJ the same month. A couple of guys who would have been lefties for a long time. Miami pitching coach, J.D. Arteaga. Canarella on the ground up the middle. Patelli's excellent with the glove. He throws. Capus packs. Right on cue. More Miami defense. And it's just what we continue to see game after game. The defense has just come up big. This ball is hit right back up the middle. Cam Canarella, who can fly. Patelli gets it. But how about this one with Capus? He doesn't even watch the ball in his glove. He kind of knows where it's going to be. Here comes the glove to make the play. Now it's Cooper Engel. Sinta came in in the fourth inning. Got Canarella. Schlesinger got him here in the sixth with a ground down. And Sinta got Grice in the fourth as well. Ingle did double left on left against Sinta. And now against Schlesinger, he's behind nothing in two. The puzzle pieces for Miami pitching that they've tried to just find a way to make work. 0-2. Oh, Cut on and missed. First one, two, three inning for Miami pitching against the Tigers offense in this one. 10 pitch inning for the lefty. An RPI in the 50s, and can they squeak in? That's going to be the tough one. Yo Yo Morales singles to center to start the seventh with Miami up two. 
More of the same from him, Danny. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he gets a little bit of this from his dad, right? His dad played for the Cuban national team. He actually fled his homeland, brought his family over here. Yo-Yo was born in the United States. Guys, you know he's played for Team USA a couple of times. But when I talked to him earlier this year, he said it was actually mom who got him into baseball. He's so grateful and thankful for that. He said, you know, growing up, dad, even the fungos weren't easy. But mom, mom's always been there to support me and get me in this game, guys. He is such a good kid, is what his head coach Gino Damari told us pregame in the dugout. And Gino said it's crazy how quickly a college career goes by. In a couple weeks, Yo-Yo's gone. You and I remember yeah, when he came first, in. Yeah, we remember him probably 35 pounds lighter as well. And just the growth that he has had. Lake Sear grounds it to Blackwell. Bertram turns it. That's an easy two for Jackson Lindley. Doing his job out of the Clemson pen. Keeping the Tigers within two in the seventh. Man, just what the doctor order for Clemson. The 6-4-3 double play. Nice and easy, Bertram. All the way over to Grice for that easy double play. Last note on Yo-Yo Morales. Gino DeMario said he's one of the most confident guys he's ever coached. The most confident, Brian Braun. Ryan Braun. I mean, I got to play with Ryan Braun, and I've seen his development and saw what he was doing when we were playing with each other in college. You see the same from Yo-Yo Morales, just that confidence. Nothing gets to him. He's able to go out there and be confident consistently. You guys were hitting 3-4 back in the day. We were. We're doing some damage. 3-0 the count on Zach Levinson. Lindley deals, and Brewers in a strike. It just felt like this would be a battle all the way through. Both these teams playing such good baseball. Clemson, of course, the 15-game winning streak among the longest in program history as Levinson works his second walk in his many trips, and he's on with two outs in the seven. Oh, here we go. Wow, I was so young. Talk to me about the cap under the helmet. Well, the, the helmet kept falling off, so I had to put the cap on there so the helmet wouldn't just fly off me every single time. And, and that was, I believe, that was against NC State to go to Omaha. That was, should have been Super Regionals on that one. It has been brought to our attention that once upon a time, you, yes, there you are, in 2004, filled out a Q&A <laughs> you got your Slim Jims. <laughs> For the Miami website. Do you remember this Q&A? No. I mean, it was, no. You got asked if you were given two first-class airline tickets anywhere in the world, where would you go? <laughs> Dude, you're going to get me in trouble with the wifey. But she knows. Judy has read this before. She has. And you said you would go to the pyramids in Egypt. I thought pyramids were cool. And you said you would bring Jessica Beal with you. Summer Catch was just out there, and she was a very talented actress. Cut and miss, Lorenzo Gonzalez. Gabby, the door will be locked when you come home tonight. <laughs> it's your fault. I'm trying, I guess I'm flying to Chicago to hang out with you. The question said, where would you go, not who would you bring? No, it said you had, had no way. What did it say? There was two things on that question. It was a two-part question. Two and two to count on Renzo Gonzalez. That's awesome. <laughs> you trying to get me in trouble. If I start getting blown up over here by the wife, I'm going to be mad at you. A check on Zach Levinson. Lindley's trying to keep this a two-run game. He's got two outs in the seventh. And big bats coming in the home half after the stretch for the Tigers. Three, four, and five. Lindley's 2-2. Two, two. Zala squibs and foul off the end of the bat. Gonzalez had the bases loaded walk his last time against Tristan Smith. Two 
for two. Gonzalez on the ground to second. Bertram flips. Handing over. Lindley does it again. Gabby will be locked out. The pyramids of Egypt, folks. Jessica Biel, where are you? Didn't make it to Egypt, but you did make it to the big leagues after your time at UM. I did. I got married to somebody better than Jessica Beal, that's for sure. Yes, well done. Thank you very much. I needed to get that one back. Love you, sweetie. I locked the door, please. <laughs> Two massive programs on the biggest ACC stage of the season, the championship game in Durham, North Carolina at the D-Bound. And this is go time for Clemson. Three, four, and five, starting with Will Taylor. In the bottom of the seventh, down by two runs. Winners of 25 of their last 28 games. And of course, 15 in a row. 2 0 from Rafe Schlesinger. All right, it's getting late. Miami's been focused on defense. So, as they've often done recently, Dorian Gonzalez comes in and replaces Blake Sear. That's a strike fine presentation from Carlos Perez to steal one. Taylor with the infield single in the first, then the walk, and then a ground out to third. Three and one. Gosh, she's been so patient. Just sort of oozing confidence in the box. And OBP coming into today right around 480. And a team leading 42 walks. 3-1. Tying run to the plate in the seventh. And it's Caden Grice. And this is right now what Miami can't afford. To put somebody on in front of this man right here who's been doing it all ACC championship tournament. Just getting the big hit. Grand slam, game one. Second game, home run. And now, all of a sudden, a chance for him to tie this ball game. Yeah, guys, and the approach when I talked to him pregame, he said this year, more relaxed, have way more fun in the box. That's been the key for him. Mentally free, to your point, Danny. It's been the key for Caden Grice. Here comes J.D. Arteaga after Rafe Schlesinger has been out of the zone to begin the seventh. We really enjoyed chatting with the 21st year pitching coach pregame. One of the best in the country. His number 33 is retired in Kane's history. Pitched from 94 to 97, part of four straight College World Series teams. After he originally arrived as a walk-on first baseman at the University of Miami. And again, we talked about that bullpen and, and, and the lack of right now for UM that really they went for it. And they've been, they went for it the whole entire tournament to get to this spot where they're at right now. And we talk about, too, always looking at who's going to be that guy that steps up for UM and that bullpen. So Alejandro Torres, who's pitched each of the last two ball games. Grice slices one. Left field falling fast, dunks it down a base hit. Tying run is on for Clemson. Down by two with nobody out. And wild Billy Amick striding up. Another guy who has been doing it. Caden Grice, this ball gets in on him just a little bit and he is able to flare it to left. And boy, Gino is not happy Rafe Schlesinger came in for the lefties and now the righty Billy Amick is next and this is as high leverage a spot as you will find Billy Amick one of the hottest hitters in America awaits Alejandro Torres when we come back to the ACC championship are just silly the last 24 games for the sophomore slugger Billy Amick going back to the middle of April and a Notre Dame series 
45 for 95 in that time with 43 driven in, including a bull shot yesterday. And a powerful, powerful righty. Both of these pitches were breaking balls left up in the zone, and he's making the pitchers pay. And he has been making them pay for a long time now. Not an easy task to go up against Billy Yamick for Alejandro Torres. Now, Torres does like throwing that fastball in, and he's going to throw a whole bunch of them. He throws a fastball up in the zone, something to watch out for, especially with a guy like Billy Amick. Does throw a slider as well. Mostly, though, he will throw that fastball in and up to a righty. Against the all-ACC first-team choice, Billy Amick. Eric Package says an inspirational story for anyone who's down on the depth chart and not getting a chance. He was third in the first base slash DH pecking order. Caden Grice was pitching. Chad Ferry got hit by a pitch, and that's the only reason earlier this year Billy Amick got a chance. He was delivering, and he kept forcing the hand of Clemson. And now here he is with two on. First pitch swing, left field. Amick off the top of the wall. Taylor races around and scores. And it's a one-run game. Wild Bill on the scene. Well, we talked about Billy Amick and what he can do and how dangerous he is. Here it is, it's a fastball, it's in, and I guarantee you Amick knew that that's where Torres likes to throw it. Gets that bat head, beats it to the spot, top of the wall, just missing a home run. Boy, this Clemson team just keeps coming at you. 104 off the bat of Billy Amick. This guy is stoic, too. You listen to every post-game answer he gives. He gets asked about himself individually, and why wouldn't you ask him about that, the way he's going? <laughs> and everything seems to be a team-oriented answer. He is shifting the attention away from himself and onto his teammates. You know, that's something that you actually see with this team as a group, collectively because you do the same thing with Caden Grice. You try to get him to talk about himself. The accolades, the grand slams, congratulations. You hit three grand slams in one season, never been done in Clemson. And he says, yeah, you have to give it to my teammates because they got home base. Infield is in right now. Ball one to Riley Bertram. A three-time captain, twice at Michigan. As he was a part of a college World Series team there with Eric Bakich. And now with the Tigers. Uh, you can see there's no outs bringing in the infield against Bertram. Torres is 1-0. Bertram tugs it foul. And he had an RBI single in the first. Struck out swinging in the third and rolled the second in the fifth. You have to think, Mike, that the reason why Gino is doing this is because he knows that he's shorthanded in the bullpen. So you bring in the infield. Oh, now he's starting to bring them back. So now middle goes back, only corners are in. Why do that on a 1 1 without the double play possibility? I was, and that's what I was going to say. My whole thought process at that point was you know, Gino understands that, you know what? I am very short handed in the bullpen. I'm going to need to play this game to win. I'll bring that infield in. If I get that hard ground ball, I can get the out. Now he's saying, fine, we'll give up a run to get the out. 2-1. On the inside corner, Torres pitching in with a fastball to earn a 2-2 count. Bertram has a knack for quality ABs. 2-2. Two, two. Pulls it. Right field. Toward the wall. Gone! His first in a Clemson uniform. And a silencer. Gets 
the fastball and drives it deep to right center field. With men on second and third, it's a three-run home run, giving Clemson the lead. Riley Bertram has played a lot of college baseball. It's his fifth year. His first, as we told you at Clemson, his first home run in a Tigers uniform. And he comes through. Ball and a strike on Blake Wright. Before that swing from Riley Bertram. Two collegiate home runs in 629 collegiate at-bats. As big as any swing he's ever had in his life. Yeah, when we talked to Backage earlier this year, he told us this guy's got the highest IQ. His postseason experience is off the charts. Obviously, Omaha. Oh, and most of all, guys, he's clutch. Like that. One-two to Blake Wright. Up and away. for Clemson in the seventh. Now we talked about this Clemson team. They're never going to be down and out. This team is just too good. They continue to put pressure on the opposition time and time again. It was just a matter of time until they were going to break out. What a huge hit from Bertram. My goodness. How about his confidence as well? Oh. Doing the silencer. The silencer as he's coming around second base. Shushing the Canes. Then Blackwell cuts through a fastball. I mean, just a fastball down the middle and he absolutely crushes it and there it is, the silencer. I guess for Don Patelli or Yo-Yo Morales or both. Probably both. These teams did not meet in the regular season. And clashing here in the ACC championship game. Clemson has woken up after Miami had scored the last five runs of this game. And the Tigers hadn't scored since the second when they were up 3-0. I mean, they were being held. You looked at it. They were at one point two for about 15 or 14 or something like that. But then you knew that at some point, this team is just too good. They come up with too many clutch hits. And every single game, it seems to be a different person who just comes up with that big one today, Riley Bertram. But then you go look at Amick, big double. Things that were just going to happen in this ball game just because of the way that they play. And not only that, the way that they are in that dugout, the way that they're talking, even after they gave up two where they lost a lead in the fifth, the biggest thing was talking together, hey, this is not over, we're all right, we're good. This is a different type of team in that Clemson dugout. And I think it's impossible to overstate the impact Eric Package and his staff have made leading the Tigers. Such a historic program. Main stays in Omaha, dozen trips total there. Of course, missing out on regionals the last couple of years. Coaching change, Eric Package takes over for Monty Lee. And after the rocky first half of the season, Clemson is cooking. And they have a confidence about them. And they've got the pedigree. And Caden Grice has talked about that. Like, he said it after the game yesterday. We expect to be in the ACC championship game. When you go to Clemson, 
that is the expectation because of those who came before you. You know, the, the biggest thing, too, is even talking to Backage yesterday, like, hey, how, how are you guys doing? And the first word he told us was dangerous. And we were like, yeah, you are. You're very dangerous. Up and down that lineup, just guys go out there and compete, give you good ABs, make it tough on the opposing pitcher, opposing defenses. 2-2 to Blackwell, and he bounces it to Morales. Had to wait, slings to second. Gonzalez will settle for that. First down. And how about Jack Leggett being right there on the hip <laughs> of Eric Backage in the Clemson dugout. Of course, a legendary head coach, 22 years at the helm, six college World Series berths on staff assisting with player, staff, and program development. And he's number seven retired in the middle of April. A legend. And still there, still a part of it, and loves it. Remember when they uh, retired his number, he gave up. He went to do the lineup card and does all that. And he looks over and all the guys are waiting for that slide. And he comes in and he goes and does his diving slide into the group of guys. I mean, just a legendary coach. Jack Crichton drops down a bomb. Carlos Perez pounces on it. Round number two. Down to Danny. Have seven with seven. All right, so Jack Leggett takes the team. They go and stand in a huddle together. And I came up to him pregame. I said, What's the speech about today? Are there going to be any props? Sometimes he brings props out there. He said, No props, but we're going to give you the three C's. Okay, number one is conflict, two is change, three is commitment, four is championship. So essentially, guys, he's rolling through the three, the, these four C's at conflict. You know, there's new challenges. This team has had a lot of challenges this season. Change, holding guys accountable, commitment. This is the standard. This is where we're at now. And then, of course, championship, which is what they're at on this Sunday. And the Tigers are on the comeback trail with the culture and that dugout and permeating the program. They're up by two in the seventh, and Miami's going back to the bullpen for Alex Walsh, left-hander who comes on after Clemson's already sent seven to the plate and put up four runs to surge ahead by two. By the way, Jack Leggett is telling us pregame about some video he found on Instagram about a 12-year-old <laughs> basketball player in the Dominican Republic. And he pulled motivation from that video. And similar to what Danny was relaying in terms of his messaging to the team, he said, oh, I saved the video, bookmarked it on Instagram, internalized the message from the 12 year old basketball player and then shared it with the team <laughs> said you're you're that active on instagram he said oh, absolutely <laughs> act seven jack leggett he's got 155 posts <laughs> social media made him. speaking of seven it's been a big seventh inning for the tigers they put up the four runs they lead seven five and it all started with a will taylor walk caden grice then singled and then billy amick came to the plate and Billy Amick, you knew what he was looking for, gets that fastball, drops that bad head, hits it off the top of the wall, and then Riley Bertram gets a fastball out over the plate, hits the three-run home run, and then goes on and gives the silencer. This team in search of an 11th. ACC tournament title and the first since a weather altered 2016. This team will be a national seed, top eight. We'll see how their journey continues. They're up by two, bottom of the seven, two outs, and Cam Canarella takes ball one from the wiry Alex Walsh. Morella had the 421-foot home run in the second. Cuts through an elevated fastball. The farthest home run that he has ever hit. He did that in the, in the bottom of the second inning. Boy, that ball was destroyed to right field. Sure was. 1-1 one, one misses up on a gentle breaking ball. Yeah. 
fastball just off the edge. It's a Canarella. Canarella slices one to left. Viegas spins around and can't haul it in. Clemson leads by three in the title game. And for Miami, things are starting to fall apart. Cam Canarella hits this ball extremely well. It's going to be an E7. Comes around, is just not able to make the play. Loses it. Ball gets by. Wright is able to score. And Clemson adds another. Now Cooper Engel. Strike three and one. Angle works a walk. He's been a base on base three times in this one. Singled and doubled earlier. Now walks here. And Alex Walsh will have to deal with the heart of the Clemson lineup now with two outs and two on. And Will Taylor's coming back up, has been on base three times today. He is one for two with a hit and two walks. He is a dangerous, dangerous hitter. Again, we've talked about Miami and their bullpen and the lack of in this game just because they basically went for it to get to this point where they're at right now. And J.D. Arteaga right now is talking with Alec Walsh just to try to calm him down, let him know, hey, just go out there and, st and throw strikes. That's all you can do. You made your pitch. Unfortunately, Villegas wasn't able to come up with it, but you just got to continue to attack. 6'4 freshman from Boynton Beach. It only worked eight and a third before coming in here. Had only faced one ACC opponent the last two months. That was in late April. Will Taylor's been on three times. And in nine of his last ten plate appearances, he's reached base. <laughs> it's incredible. It's silly. By either walk or hit. I mean, it, it's just he's not expanding the zone. Really smart hitter at the plate. Taylor fouls one off. Thompson's going to be scared oh. in a regional. How hot they have been, and they just continue to be hot, playing as a team, playing for one another. Eesh. The 15-game winning streak coming into today. Second longest active streak in the country behind Oral Roberts. Who ran up to 18 games with a win yesterday. BC head coach Mike Gambino said the other day, feels like Clemson hasn't lost a game in three months. One, two. Taylor pulls it and hits it well. Toward Tobacco Road and off the top of the wall. Canarella scores. Ingle right behind him. And Clemson widens the gap in the seventh. What a 
swing by Will Taylor. Man, he crushed that ball. I thought that ball was a home run. I thought it got out of the ballpark. This thing got hit. It was a rocket. Where does this ball hit? Off the hands. That's going to be a round tripper if they go ahead and check this. And I think that's what they're doing. They're going out there to say, I believe that that hit somebody's hand. I think that's a home run. We should go check this one out. If they do, they will see that a fan actually hit that ball back into play, and it will be a home run. Bottom line, we both think it's a home run. Yes. And it is. Will Taylor hits a three-run home run, and Clemson adds another. And here's the thing, at the end of it, whenever you have replays, you want to get the call right. Yep. And that's the main thing in a game. It's getting the call right. That's why replays are there. A certain two-part word uttered by Gino Damari. Not happy with the results. Seven five is the Clemson lead, and now Caden Grice slices one in the left, and he drops that down. Eleventh batter of the inning in what is an eight-run seven for Clemson. They've had two walks, two three-run homers. An RBI double in this game. There is an error in left. A single from Grice, and now another single from Caden Grice. Riley Bertram's getting ready again. He homered for just the third time in his collegiate career. His teammates all year have been giving him a hard time for not hitting one in his first season with Clemson. Not anymore, says Riley Bertram. No, he said, I finally got one, and I got one when it counted the most. Sebastian Perez comes on for Miami after Clemson has already put up eight runs in a seventh inning that is not yet over here in the ACC championship game. And so the six-foot-five right-hander with some upside enters here with Miami nearing the end of its options as far as pitching goes. Yeah, they definitely are, and for Perez, it's a good fastball that he's going to throw. He does live up in the zone with that fastball, and it's one of these things where you're just telling him, hey, just get us out of this inning and get us back into the dugout. The bottom of the seven so far has been 30 minutes to play this, and it's not over yet. Felt like a huge moment, I don't know, about 20 of those 30 minutes ago when Billy Amick, this guy, had an RBI double the left off the wall. Just missed a home run. Well, from his perspective, that's all right because his teammates have hit two other home runs behind him, both three-run shots this inning. What an inning by Clemson. Man. That is loud. One one. On the ground, gently to short. Patelli charges, throws, and a go. A snowman in the seventh for the Tigers, and the lead is six, and they are six outs away from an ECC crown. This Clemson offense has had some loud, loud innings. 
they, I mean, they're just so good up and down the lineup, and that's why they're never out of it. You look at their runs in loud innings like you just talked about. Thursday, they scored seven in the sixth. Saturday, five in the first to start off that game in the semifinals against UNC. And here in the championship game, eight runs in the seventh inning, just up and down the lineup doing work. It's a surge in front in this game. They trailed by two, they now lead by six. And like we said, six outs away from the finish line and they are bringing in the big guns. Ryan Ammons, junior lefty. He's been a Friday starter, settled back into a closing job for the Tigers, enters here with five saves on the season. And you can see now that Clemson is saying, all right, we're going for this one. Let's get this game done with as they too bring in their man, Amons. Eric Backage trying to win an ACC tournament championship in his first year at the helm. Miami with six outs left to play with. Carlos Perez takes strike one from Ammons. Seven, eight, nine for the Canes. Perez is punched out three times. They have loved the metrics on Ryan Ammons. They transitioned him into that starting role, but just better suited for the back end. He was nicked up earlier this year. A muscle issue in his forearm. But is able to come back and pitch in spots like this. A captain for the Tigers. One, two. Oh, man. Pull that string, Ryan Evans. My goodness, what a pitch. Fastball slider changeup combo. He can throw that slider changeup whenever he wants. Here, he goes with the changeup and pulls the string. What a pitch there to Carlos Perez. Oof. Fastball up to start out to Don Patelli. Sometimes they call it a split change. Eric Backage calls it a splitter. True split. That thing was nasty. All his pitches, to your point, Ammons throws with max effort. So it's the same arm speed coming in. And what he does good too is, especially since you have that split, split change, you have that fastball that you're working down in the zone. And since he does have that same arm speed, that split looks like it's going to be that fastball. So you think, oh, I've got it. And then by the time you go to swing, it's down in the dirt. This fastball's got great induced vertical break, meaning it fights against gravity really well. As you often say, it stays on plane. That's up high. Playing was high that time, and it's a five-pitch walk to Patelli with one out. Miami's got a base runner aboard down six. And when that ball stays on play like we're talking about, guys swing underneath it. Because usually what happens, gravity will take that ball down. And when gravity takes that ball down, those are that swing path that guys will have. So since he has that good spin rate on his fastball, it stays on playing. Guys swing underneath it. You get a lot of swings and misses. Jacoby Long. He's next up for Miami in the ninth spot. A couple of singles so far. He scored two runs. Yeah, something's going on here. I think maybe some dirt got in the eyes of Engel there. Because he trying to call time. He was trying to look. I can't see what was going on for a second there. Oh, we're all the elements. 
Oh, doing great. Climate control good enough for you in here? It's actually getting a little chilly. Raise <laughs> that up a little bit. Long foul. Well, now I can expect that splitty right here. Long is a little out in front on that fastball. And that's when you would go to that splitty. Two, two. Let's see. Yep. Nasty. And just a good pitch. And that's what happens since he's able to stay down with that fastball and ride it. That split finger just is that much nastier. It looks just like the fastball out of the hand and just catches you right out in front. It's the difference between being as well-stocked in the bullpen as Clemson was versus how Miami was. We've been talking about that for three hours. Capus floats one behind right and in the left. Telly the second. Two on after C.J. Kafis gets aboard for the third time with his second hit. It's, it's one of the things, too, that you see with this Miami offense is that they're not going to give up either. They're going to keep putting the pressure on. They're going to keep swinging the bat, especially after what Clemson just finished doing, putting up eight in the bottom of the seventh inning. Team can easily just roll over and say, you know what, forget about it. We're done. It's a real big spot here with Eddie Villegas because Yo-Yo Morales is next. And boy, you would love to get it to him with a oh, chance yeah. with one swing to pull you even closer if you're Miami. Yeah, I mean, with Yo-Yo, anything is possible. And if Villegas is able to get on here, Yo-Yo comes up, big swing in the bat, all of a sudden you can make this game a 9 to 11 ball game. And all of a sudden Miami is back into it. So on the Clemson side, they kind of know that too. So they're going to do everything in their possibility to not let that happen. Remember behind Morales is the spot of Blake Sear. Yep. And early on, Miami made the defensive substitution only up by two runs. And so now they don't have one of their top hitters behind him in the eighth inning. But right now it's Villegas. 1-1, one, one. up high. Villegas has had the unenviable task of facing left-handers in four of his five plate appearances today. And that's what Clemson was able to do. Clemson didn't have to use that many bullpen guys just because of what Caden Price did in that semifinal game. Ammon strikes out Villegas. K struck from Ryan Ammons. That is some serious bounce coming off the mound. That's it by six. Oh, just a good fastball up in the zone. Villegas could not catch up to it. Most runs allowed in any inning this season. season. The eight spot given up by the Canes in that seven. Uh, there's no nothing really you can do if you're a Miami Hurricane. Just Clemson is that good. And then you start to look at kind of the situation that they were in. They knew that in that bullpen, that was going to be an issue. And they had to call on somebody to maybe do something extraordinary, let's say. And, you know, Clemson kind of just waited them out and with Clemson, the type of team that they have, and we talked about it, not only in this game, this whole entire tournament and, and previously that this is a really good ball club that can hit. And they were able to just get it in that seventh inning. Riley Bertram had that three run home run in the seventh that gave him the lead. As big a swing as he's probably ever had. 2-0 from Sebastian Perez. No team has reached the ACC championship game as much as Clemson has. This is their 23rd trip 
to the conference title game. situation gets a fastball down and away and pulls it to right center field for the three run home run in that seventh inning you know maybe he was silencing his teammates too for <laughs> hearing their chirps about the for no hearing home their runs. chirps of the no homers bertram off the end of the bat shallow center long got a late jump and makes a diving catch one away That was a very nice play by Long coming in full dive, making the play. Sliding grab for Long. Cut and miss to begin from Blake Wright. Walk, walk, single his last three times. Slider away, a ball and a strike. Aside from Clemson and maybe Wake Forest, yep. I'll take those two off the table for you. ACC team that you feel best about in the NCAA tournament? I mean, you got to say Miami, of course, just because they have been playing extremely good baseball. The way that they played even in this tournament to get to the spot where they're at. Remember, they beat a number one team in Wake Forest. So they definitely deserve to be a team that you're looking at to say, yeah, this is a very good team. Another one too is Virginia. Virginia, you look at them, they led the NCAA in average. They were top, I believe, six in pitching. So that's another team that's been playing really good baseball. Right pops to Patelli, two down. So I, when you start to look at the teams in ACC play, I feel like there's a very good possibility where you can see three or four teams make it to Omaha. I, I really do. I, I honestly believe that just because of the type of talent that was in ACC play this year. Ben Blackwell. Takes a strike. He got Duke and Boston College as well, who've been right around that hosting discussion as well over the course of the last couple of weeks. Blackwell lines it to left. Good jump by Eddie Villegas. One, two, three. Last licks for Miami. Yo Yo Morales and the Canes down six to the ninth. Three times now, a first-year ACC head coach has reached the ACC tournament title game. All three of them are Clemson guys. <laughs> and the first two, Jack Leggett and Monty Lee, won it. And there's Jack Leggett. And around him is Eric Backage trying to do the same. I mean, that's when you look at that, that's crazy to me that Clemson's the only one that's been able to do it in their coaching staff. Ball in the hand of Ryan Ammons trying to end it. He has to navigate three, four, and five of Miami, the 11th ranked team in the country. 2-0 to Yo-Yo Morales, who's had a whale of a tournament. Intentionally walked in this game in the fifth. Singled the center his last time in the seventh. Possible first round pick. Texted with Kylie McDaniel, our ESPN MLB insider earlier today, he said he just turned in a mock draft that has Yo-Yo going 32nd overall. Ooh. And said he probably thinks he's going somewhere between 25 and 35. In other words, quite high. Yeah, quite high. I think, I think that you might see him go even before that. Uh, just when you look at what Yo-Yo's been able to do and the way that he swings the bat and the way that he plays the hot corner and, and the type of power that he has, which his power is to right center field. 
teams love that. Big league teams kind of drool for a guy who have opposite field power. So I think Kylie might have him a little bit lower than where I think he's going to go. Hammonds issues the leadoff walk, and now Dorian Gonzalez batting for the first time in the spot of Blake Sear in the cleanup spot. And Danny was asking Gino Damari about that oppo power from Yo-Yo Morales pregame. And Gino was saying, remember last year he had that three home run game in regionals? Well, it was one home run to center and two the opposite way to right. Hey, there's not many guys who have his type of power to that side of the field. And to be successful, especially playing pro ball and then you go to the big leagues, you need to be able to do that. To short, Blackwell can't recover. So there's two on for Miami with nobody out. Here in the top of the ninth inning, trailing by a half dozen. And Gonzalez hits that ball hard. Blackwell just could not get in front of it. This ball is hit extremely hard. Blackwell tries to scoot his body, can't get it. And then when he's trying to pick it up, he actually kicks it with his right foot and it gets away from him. That's the first error for Clemson in the tournament. Brings up Zach Levinson. He's homered and walked twice. Skies this one deep to center. It's still carrying and on the track. That ball is caught by Cam Canarella. One away on an adventure up along the warning track. Our right. packages. Yeah, I know. I mean, I saw I saw the left field umpire, the one that's playing out there, saying it was a catch. Yes. Eric Package didn't think so. So he yeah. just, I think, was trying to get a, a possible triple play situation started there. But the signal from the left field umpire was immediately and definitively a catch by Canarella. And this ball, Levinson, hits well. Now, here's the thing. The, the sky right now, it is great. Looks exactly like the baseball. He go, Cam Canarella goes back. He finally sees it again, is able to dive and make the play. But it's one of those situations, too, where you're looking up into the sky, and that ball and the sky both look the same. Quick work. And <laughs> yep, it's an out for Cam Canarella. Hey, by the way, just wanted to give a shout out to the umpiring crew that's been working all week. We talked about our production crew as well. Behind the scenes, the umps logging the long hours too, and they have been all season. And big thanks to the folks from the Atlantic Coast Conference and from the Durham Bulls for being such wonderful hosts for this event. It has been a pleasure to be here in the city of Durham. Renzo Gonzalez takes inside. So two on, one out. Clemson still by six. And trying to get the last two outs. One and two from Ryan Ammons. <laughs> Got some hecklers here, and they might be young, but they're aggressive. Two, two. In the air, end of the bat toward the Clemson pen. Ducking for cover out of play. We've been dodging raindrops the last two days as well here at the deep end. And at the Bosch in Chapel Hill. Yeah, that one yesterday, boy. Woo. Came to be about the sixth or seventh inning, and all of a sudden the waterworks came out. I'm surprised that they even finished that ball game with the way that that field was. Two, two. Up high, and Gonzalez got hit. In 
Lane. So now with a busted up knuckle, you got to stand in, clench your fist ahead of a 3 2 against a pretty nasty closer. Left on left. Not, yeah, it's. It's one of those tough ones for Renzo Gonzalez because as a hitter, you know that you get hit. You know it. You feel it. It hurts, especially when you get hit in the hand. You have all those small, like those small little bones, and you can see that that Perez is telling him, "Dude, that or Gonzalez is saying, hey, that hit me, man. Like I should be on first base right now." Up high, ball four. As well, that ends. <laughs> A couple minutes later, we have some unhappy campers in the building. And the bases are loaded for the Canes. Yo Yo Morales walked. Dorian Gonzalez reached on an error. Renzo Gonzalez got hit by a pitch and walked. We're gonna get a pinch hitter here in the spot of Carlos Perez, who been scuffling here over the course of this week. So here comes the big-bodied redshirt freshman Lorenzo Carrier, six foot five, 225 pounds, a guy who's got 19 hits this year, including four home runs. He went on a home run binge a little while back, beginning in the middle of April, when he stepped into a starting role two months into the season. Got a chance against North Carolina and went on a tear. First pitch swinging, gets under it to right at third. Long way to go. Infield fly for out number two, and Clemson's one out away. You know, Carrier, Carrier comes up, and boy, he put a good swing on this paw. Just gets right underneath this pitch. Big body guy could easily launch that ball over the bowl and left. So it's up to Dom Patelli. Clemson looking for an ACC championship. Ball one outside. The Clemson journey that started in a way that didn't make you think it would end with like this. Count on and miss, one and one. They were 17 and 14 overall. I know. Two and eight in the ACC. Two and eight in the ACC, and then boy, they just turned it completely around. The one-one. Telly swings through it, and Clemson is one strike away. For Patelli now, it's almost like just trying to play pepper. Get this ball. You have the whole huge opening on the left side of the field, shortstop. Get on and missed! Clemson, crown champions of the ACC championship! in these Tigers. Congratulations to the Clemson Tigers, the, one of the hottest teams in all of NCAA comes in and wins the ACC championship title. My goodness, what a team. The way that they played together, the way that they swung the bat this whole entire championship tournament, the way they pitched and played defense. Congratulations to them. You gotta give credit to, to Miami. They played a heck of a tournament. They beat the number one team in the country in Wake Forest. They came to play, they left it out on the field. And for Clemson, they take home the title. Gas up the ladder from Ryan Ammons and the celebration was all. Look out at the bottom. 
of that dog pile. <laughs> you got to watch out so you don't get hurt. Regionals are still to be played. Both these teams will be in. Both these teams will be hosting. Both these teams should go very deep into the NCAA tournament. And I wouldn't be surprised if both these teams end up in Omaha.